Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Real Juicy Detox. Welcome to the Real Juicy Detox. I'm Burns, I'm your certified detox specialist. And here in our Real Juicy Detox kitchen, we are going to be making pastels today. That's right. We are making a Trinidadian favorite. It's, it's a quintessential, I would say, Trinidadian Christmas dish. Yes, no Trinidadian household would be complete without Trinidadian pastels, you hear what I'm saying? On a Christmas morning, or Christmas Eve, or Christmas day, or Christmas dinner, or all of the above. So today we are making my favorite recipe, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to eat for Christmas, but we're making it raw vegan style, you guys. We are making it healthy. We are making it with a live food, no meat. That's right, but hold on. I know you're skeptical. I know you're skeptical but stay with me because this is gonna be so good. Also, in today's class, we are going to be talking about all things detox related and all, all of your questions. If you've got questions, if you've got anything that you wanna share about your detox journey, if you're brand new to this and you have no idea what this is all about, you're in the right place. You're in the right place, you found me, so drop in, say hello, let me know where you are tuning in from because we are about to get started, you guys. I'm just gonna go to our Facebook, uh, my Facebook page where I'm also streaming this live. And I'm gonna share this out to some of our groups that I always share this to. And those juicing groups are uh, Juicing and Raw Food Support Group for Your Healing Journey, Juicing for Health, um, what else, what else, solid food vacation slash juice feasting, because even if you're on a solid food vacation, you need something to eat once you're done your solid food vacation, right? How do you turn this into a lifestyle? You turn this into a lifestyle by putting in some beautiful, live, uh, vibrant food, and that's what we are doing here. So let me just finish sharing this out. I also share this to uh, the Dr. Morris groups that I belong to, and those are sharing the detox journey with Dr. by Dr. Robert Morse, ND, and fans of Dr. Robert Morse, ND. And we are all shared up because sharing is caring, you guys. If you get any value from this, you want to share this with your Trinidadian friends. It's like, oh my God, look at what Burnsy's doing. Look at what Burns is up to then you go right on ahead and share this. Do not be shy. And if you can, if you can, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you can hop over to the, to the YouTube channel, come on, that would do your sister a huge favor. Uh, let's see who is here. Hey, 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 Cindy in the house. Get all your Christmas shopping done. Yes, we did. We got all of our Christmas shopping done. We don't, I don't go overboard with Christmas shopping uh, just because, we don't, <laughs> just because we don't. Um, but yes, we got some beautiful things for the kids for Christmas and uh, I am excited. Danica is gonna be coming home on Christmas Eve. The house is all ready, well, almost all ready. Let me know if you guys are getting ready. Are you guys all done your Christmas shopping? Let us know in the comments. Hey, 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 Rockstar Louise. Rockstar Louise is in the house. Hello everyone, had a salad for dinner last night with gua guacamole dressing, it was delicious. Drop your dressing in the, in the comments, my friend. Let us know what you had in your dressing. We would love to see that. Isabella is here, hi Isabella. How are you doing, sweetheart? I hope that you had a good weekend and I hope that you are finding some solace and some comfort in other people's success stories as you work through your healing journey. Uh, you know, Isabella, it can be, it can feel pretty scary working through your, uh, your, your healing journey. I totally get it. You second guess everything. You hear what the doctors are telling you and you know, they're the experts, air quotes, experts. And uh, we can get really wrapped up in a lot of stuff that the doctors say, and most of it is not true. So we have to unlearn a few things when it comes to our own health and our own vitality and uh, recognizing that fruits, fruits, melons, and berries, baby, this is where your healing happens. Recognizing that the power of these fruits to detoxify our body and to regenerate our body is everything. So don't 
uh, don't doubt the process. If you're new to all of this and you're just finding me, uh, Detox 101 in the comments, uh, in the description of this video, and Detox 102, you're welcome. You're welcome. Mm. Cantaloupe juice is like candy, you guys like candy. So we are going to get started right away. So if you're brand new to my channel, what you will see is a live cooking demonstration, as it were. <laughs> you're going to see a live cooking show um, where we also talk about all things detox related. And today, as I mentioned, we are making Trinidadian pastels. Yes, we are. Um, I've made these before. And it's Christmas time. It's Christmas. Christmas is today is December 21st. It is the day of the great conjunction of Jupiter and and Saturn. Yes, it is. A lot of things are happening. A lot of awakening is happening on the planet. Uh, it, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, baby. Yes, it is. And listen, we got to we got to really make sure that we keep our vibration high and that we continue to do our work to elevate ourselves and to elevate each other. We've got to continue the work on making sure that our physical bodies are as light as possible because you know, the physical body carries around our light bodies. That's right, our, our ethereal light bodies. So we want to make sure that we keep this physical body as light and as vibrant and as alive as possible. So here we are making some, I'm just cleaning up these mushrooms because we are going to put these into the chapa. Into the chapa. Into my mini food processor here, but you guys can use whatever chopping method that you want. Um, if you're doing mushrooms, I do not recommend doing a wet chop on mushrooms because they will absorb too much water. A wet chop is where you put all the stuff in your blender, fill it up with water, whiz it a few times and then strain it out and you get your 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 produce nice and finely chopped. Do not recommend doing that for these mushrooms because it will make it too uh, too wet. They'll absorb too much water. So I just clean off my mushrooms by just dusting it off like so, trying to just get off as much of the um, you know of the dirt as possible just with a a little dry cloth. So yeah, so on my channel here, <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in, by the way. in On my channel, on The Real Juicy Detox, what I've come to find is that people really enjoy seeing me prep food because a lot of you are also taking this opportunity to prep alongside with me. So we're doing this in real time. I ain't got no sous chef prepping all my stuff beforehand, you know what I'm saying? It's not that kind of cooking show. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. It's a, the kind of show where I do this in real time with you guys. And a lot of you are, are messaging me and you're letting me know that, hey, I made those burgers alongside of you, Burns. I did them in the, at the same time. And I'm like, really? Did I, was, it, was the timing, was the pacing good? Um, like I've asked some of you who I'm close friends with, like Vicky and a few of you who've been doing this alongside of the videos and you guys are like, oh yeah, we're, we're, I'm doing this alongside of you, babe. This batch, this box, so I buy these mushrooms. I've got these mushrooms like this. They come in these boxes. I, I had these in the fridge for like a week and did not get around to using them. I don't know if I want to use these. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I want to use stuff that's super fresh. And I'm, I'm questioning myself. And whenever I question myself like that, I, I regret it when I don't listen to my intuition. So these feel a little bit damp. So I think I'm going to not use them. I think I'm going to set them aside. So let me clean up all of these mushrooms. Feel free, if you are tuning into this, to ask me any questions that you might have that might come up for you. Um, I see your question here, Isabella. Let me go through. Let me see first. Hey, 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 everyone. Happy solstice. Yes, indeed. December 21st. Today is the first day of winter. Today is the grand conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, which has all kinds of uh, vibrational and 
astrological and energetic implications for us. So we are keeping it high flying, high vibing up in here. It is the dawning of the age of Aquarius and it is a good dawning of a new day. Yes, it is. Ashlyn is here. Hi, everyone. I'm raring and uh, to join the juicing train on January the 1st. Yes, I am so excited to hear that. On January the 1st, what Ashlyn is talking about, we are starting a, um, a juicing, uh, a new juice feast. Uh, we're, we're gearing up first on December 27th through January, through December 30th, or is it 31st? I always forget. What is it? What is it? It's 31st, December 31st. Uh, yeah, on December 31st, uh, so December 27th to December 31st, we are starting off with a um, uh, a raw or almost all raw chewing food. For those of you who are brand new to this whole thing and you're like, I can't do just juice burns. That's crazy talk. Well, we're going to be starting... You can actually, uh, but to help the transition go a little bit smoother for you, we're starting a collective raw or almost raw um, detox menu. Don't think you're going anywhere, Mr. Mr. Mushroom. Get back in here. So I'm just going to clean up all of these mushrooms while we chat for a little bit. So, uh, and then on January the 1st, we're going to go into a 21 or however long you want to do a juice fast for. You can do 21 days. You can, you can just set a target for yourself and then just see, you know, see how you do, see how you feel. Uh, Alana, for example, when she started um, 64 days ago with us, right, Alana? You were like, oh, I don't want to set a joke. I don't want to set a goal. And I was like, no, pick a number of days to do this because it's going to help you. And I think, Alana, you did the full 40, man. You are amazing. A rock star. Rock star Ruiz, speaking of rock stars, uh, avocado, cilantro, green onions, garlic, jalapeno, and lemon juice mixed in a bowl. No blender needed. Yeah, that sounds just too damn delicious. That sounds so good. I almost feel like making it now because I'm a little bit hungry. And I wanted to stuff some tomatoes. I got, you know what, let me put these on hold for one hot second. So the way my, my, um, hang on, whoops, I got stuff, I got, I got chills, they're multiplying, I got veggies, they're falling off the counter. So I, I kind of feel like making that, I kind of feel like making that. I need to shower, just wanted to say hi and love to you all, awesome, Alana. Um, so good that you're here, Alana. I don't find any subject for esophagus in the Dr. Morse book. I need to heal my esophagus because of that, my back pain. I'm sorry, I feel stupid with my question. I'm lost. You're not stupid, babe. You're not stupid. Every single thing in your body. And by the way, if you want to go and look up what Dr. Morse has to say about certain topics, again, I encourage you to go to rawfigs.com on rawfigs.com, I've shown you guys this before, right? On rawfigs.com, you can search for any, um, you can put in, in the search bar any kind of thing that you're experiencing. And if it has been indexed by one of Dr. Morris's students from a few years ago, he indexed a whole ton of um, Dr. Morris's videos. They pop up so that you can you can learn there. But I'm gonna let you know exactly what the issue is with your esophagus, babe. It's the acid that you have been putting into your body that is damaging and backing up all of the lymphatic waste in your system. It's causing all the protein that we have been eaten, all the protein that we would be, we've been eaten, all of the protein that we have been consuming in our in our diets. And I'll let you know what what are those proteins. Let me show you all of the the acid stuff that we have been consuming in our diet has backed up in our uh, lymphatic system because it shuts down our kidneys. When your kidneys are shut down, you cannot pee out, which is your main form of exiting of these toxins. You cannot excrete uh, these toxins out of your body because our kidneys are shut down. When your kidneys are shut down, that's like your toilet in your house being backed up. You, you go for a bowel movement, you can't flush it. What happens to your house after a while? Uh, 
Yeah. This house, this physical house that we are inhabiting, right? I need to turn this down, tilt this down just a little bit, right? Our, our physical house that we are inhabiting, when we shut down our, our elimination system, we're constipated with our bowels, so can't get rid of toxins that way. We're constipated uh, with our kidneys. Kidneys aren't filtering out, causes a huge backload back up all that acid is backing up in your system and in the beginning you know for for a while here's the acid and alkaline forming food list uh isabella have a look at this list what have you over your the course of your entire life what have you predominantly been eating that's right it's like oh damn i've eaten very little fruits and vegetables and i've eaten a whole lot of acid forming food and it is that acid forming food that after a while it catches up with us, right? First it shows up as pain and inflammation, right? Then it shows up as all kinds of other problems. The esophagus problem that you are having, babe, is because um, your entire life, you don't hear very well the website. I, it's, it's, it's in the banner, look below, hold on. See that right there? Where's my camera? See this banner on the bot right there. Look, www.rawfigs.com. All right, that is the that is the website to go and search what you're looking for, and you're going to find that you are going to uh, uh, it, put in something that you you don't understand about what's happening with your body. Doctor Morse will help you out with it. Um, come here. Don't be lost. You're you're found. Babe, you are found. You're not lost. Stop telling yourself a story that's not true. That telling yourself that story that's not true. You're not lost. You're found. You are in the right place for the right information. But when you keep saying, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Oh my God. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Pain, esophagus, oh, pancreatic cancer caused by sugar and fruits. Bullshit. Those doctors are telling you a bullshit story because they want you to be afraid. And because they, some of them just genuinely believe the, the, the stuff that they're putting in people, the battery acid level stuff that they're putting in people, some doctors just believe that that is what you should do to the body and that once you get cancer, that's it, you're screwed, but let's pump you. Stop it. Let's just stop all that, okay? No more fear. No more fear. You're in the right place. You're in the right place for the right information. Stick around. Stick around. Stick around. You got this. You got this. I'm going to make Rockstar Ruiz's um, um, salad, by the way, I mean, dressing. Hey, 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 detox your being. How, I'm so glad that you are here. How has your morning been so far? What do I recommend for a sinus infection? Hi, Margie. Oh, my gosh, Margie, it's your first time that you're commenting in class and you're asking a question. Awesome. Well, the first thing I recommend for a sinus infection is to get off of all the dairy. That's right. That's what's causing your sinus infection. Mucus forming food gets stuck in the mucus in the sinus cavity as mucus and it causes infection. So that's the first thing. Diet protocol is always going to be first. I'm going to go get some avocados. I'm going to go get some lemons out of my fridge because I want to make some of that avocado. It's like a guacamole dressing, but I want to put it into some little cocktail tomatoes that I got. So just bear with me. I'll be right back. So I get my, my avocados done. Gotta get some tomatoes. Let's see, where are those lemons? Lemons, cilantro. Green onions, where are you? There you are. Green onions, cilantro. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. My dad always used to say that. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. So you know he's here. You know he's enjoying this from the other side, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, how you mean? Mm. Both of my parents are on the other side and both of them shine down their light and their divinity on me all the time. I feel it. 
I feel it, I feel it all the time. So sinus infection, you wanna detox your body, baby. And if you are, have you been doing a juice detox? Let me know, because if you've been doing a juice detox, <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome, Isabella. You're welcome. Uh, uh, where am I? Yes, you see it now? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Carlene, how are you doing, my love? Oh, my goodness. We are having a good time today. I'm going to rinse off these tomatoes and uh, uh, and some of these other ingredients. Let me just grab some now. We are going to make some stuffed tomatoes with this guacamole um, dressing that Rockstar Ruiz was just sharing with us because I am a little bit hungry. This is going to be a long class because it takes a while, as you all know, to chop up all of these vegetables for this Bernsey burger. Uh, and it is the Bernsey burger recipe that we are using to create our pastels, our turned onion pastels. So we are going to have some fun today. You are going to have some fun today. I try not to eat nightshades since Dr. Moore said to stay away from them if you have rheumatoid arthritis. Jalapeno is the only one I have. Okay, all right. Well, that is good to know. Good to know. Um, uh, yeah, let's get these rinsed off. Let's get it rinsed up, baby. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get some tomatoes prepped because I know the salad dressing part is going to go really quickly on this. Ah, yes. I don't eat any protein for three months. Okay, good. That's really good. That's good. Giving up that meat, give up all of the acid-forming foods. You will find that your healing is really going to be amplified with that. But remember, Isabella, that part of the healing process can mean that you have certain symptoms and pain show up in your body as your body is healing those areas, right? If you guys are brand new to my channel and you have not, did you like the deliciousness, Cam? Welcome to my deliciousness. We're going to get some delicious stuff started right now. Did I wash that soap off enough? No, I did not. I can still see some bubbles. One second. Okay, so let's get this going, shall we? So I'm, I just want to, I had this idea last night to do this. Hmm. But the idea was to take my tomato, a little, these little cocktail tomatoes, and just scoop out the inside. And then I was thinking, ooh, I could pack this full of hummus or full of, mm, um, avocado nope that's too big of a bowl okay so before we do the trini pastels we're gonna have a little we're gonna have a little lunch you know what i'm saying so all i'm doing look at this i'm just scooping out the inside of that tomato so i've got a nice big open space ready to fill with Gosh, I can do a little, uh, I could do some avocado. I can chop up some peppers in there. I can put some mushrooms in there as well. So, um, yeah, so when we're eating different food, mm, delicious. What I want you guys to do, hey, Amy, thank you for being you. Yeah, Amy's amazing. One amazing soul right there. Um, what I want you to do is you decide what you what are the foods that you want to keep into your diet, all right? And it's not for anybody else to judge. Everybody's on their own journey with all of this. So 
and that even includes eating eating stuff like meat. Listen, if you want to continue eating meat, even after you know what it is that we know about meat and um, structured protein, and by the way, if you don't, I did a really great masterclass on proteins. It's in the masterclass playlist that I have linked in this video. It's a really good one to watch because it's like, oh, damn. I do not know all that stuff. What? Be aware. Be, um, be aware of what you're putting into your body. Be aware of the effect that it has on your body. And go into this with, um, with an education that you probably have not ever received anywhere before. If you're like any of us on this planet, we have not really been taught the truth about our food and the truth about this, the chemistry that happens inside of our body when we eat, when we eat food. So, um, you know, when I discovered all of this food stuff, all of the, the stuff about the chemistry that we put in our body, I decided that it was time for me to actually pay attention and start doing the research and reinventing myself, really, when it came to food. I love food. I'm a foodie. I almost bought a t-shirt yesterday that I saw at Value Village. It said foodie on it. But it wasn't cute. It wasn't cute enough. You know what I'm saying? So right now what I'm just doing is I'm just scooping out. I'm just scooping out these tomatoes. I'm just going to do two, four, six of them. Just enough for me to have a little snack. I've got some tomatoes here. So yeah, so the same thing goes for nightshade versus not nightshade. The same thing goes for whether you want it, what are your non-negotiables? What are your non-negotiables and what are the things that you don't mind relaxing on a little bit? You know what I'm saying? So the fleshy part of these tomatoes, I'm actually going to use in this recipe, I believe, to stuff these back in. I'm about to whip this up for my family. Yes, awesome. The Bernsey burgers or the tomatoes, the stuffed tomatoes. The Bernsey burgers are going to change your family's life. Hands down, I'm just letting you know. All right, anybody that loves burgers, you're going to love this. Lemon is good for mucus as well. You're right. Any fruit to detoxify your body, just to go back. Hang on a second, Mike. I'll get to you in a second. Just to go back up to uh, uh, Margie. If you're still here, Margie. Anything that is going to detoxify your body, any of the fruits, any of the, the stuff that is going to um, going to pull and astringe all of those, the, the, the mucus and the toxins out of your sinuses, that is what I would recommend going on. Um, oh my gosh, Mike, you got a great question coming up here. Okay, so you're, I'm almost there. One second. I'm here right now. Mike says, you're describing all the symptoms of my little brother. He is scared of what the doctor told him about kidney and liver damage, and he's got constipation. How can you tell if your livers or kidneys are actually damaged? Well, number one, what are the other symptoms you're having in the body? And if you're having any symptoms in the body whatsoever, your kidneys are down. Your kidneys are down. That is the, the holy grail is... <laughs> The holy grail of detoxification. By the way, detoxification is a is a is a golden key that unlocks your inner world of health and vitality. So the only way that you can truly regenerate your body is if you clean it up, right? And fruits, melons, and berries, and vegetables to some extent, but fruits, the power is in the fruits to detox your body. What am I looking for? So Let me just scoop these out for one second. So I want to try to do, I want to try to do a few things at a time. I'm scooping out the bigger pieces of the tomatoes from the tomato juice. Actually, I want to chop those up a little bit. Let me just chop those up a little bit. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to check your symptoms, your symptomology. What it, what it, what's your body experiencing? If your body is experiencing anything that does not line up with health and vitality, your kidneys are down. Your kidneys are down. 
you have a general feeling, a sense of unwell, right? Um, your liver is your utilization organ. So if you are unable to utilize or to absorb, well, absorption happens in the small intestine, utilization happens in the liver. Um, uh, but constipation, absolutely, everything is tied together. So anytime you have any symptom going on, your, your kidneys and most likely your liver, did you know that your liver is your chemical processing plant within your body? Your chemical processor, the, the, the place where all chemicals in your body are processed. Yes, the chemistry from what you eat is processed in, uh, in your liver. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do there. Um, and did you know that if you were to build a physical chemical processing plant to replicate the job of your liver, it would take 450 acres of land to build that processing plant. That's correct. You heard it here. That is according to Dr. Robert Morse. And uh, you know what? I believe the man, I do. Uh, from all of the stuff that I have seen from him and have researched and have applied in my own physical body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's my, where's my green onion that I rinsed? So I'm just making up here a dressing similar to what Rockstar Ruiz talked about. And I'm going to be filling up these cute little cocktail tomatoes uh, so that we can, where's my compost bowl? There it is. So that we can enjoy a few um, cherry tomato or d'oeuvres first before we get into cooking the Bernsey burger. Cause you know, I'm hungry. I'm feeling a little peckish, as we say in Trinidad. So before, before I start, before I really start up with the Bernsey burgers, let's make a little let's make a little lunch, shall we? I've been thinking about doing this since I since I bought these cherry tomato these not cherry tomatoes these um cocktail tomatoes. I've been thinking about doing this since getting these cocktail tomatoes. So. Let's make it up. So I've got three green onions and I got stuff lying on the floor. That is okay. Got three green onions chopped up. I have the insides of that tomato. I'm going to grab some cilantro, of course, because you know, you know, the burns, you know, she's um, all about the cilantro, right? And I'm going to put in a, an incredibly large amount of cilantro into here because I just love it. I just love it. Basically, I'm making a guacamole, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, how you mean? Just mix that around. This is going to become the stuffing to get into these tomatoes. What else? Maybe some garlic. I, I don't even remember what Rockstar Ruiz said. I just was like, okay, what did Rockstar Ruiz, what did you say was in your dressing, my friend? Let's see. Here we go. Avocado, cilantro, green onions, garlic, jalapeno, and lemon juice. Mixed in a big bowl, no blender necessary. We got a clove of garlic. I love, um, I love garlic, I love cilantro, I love all of this stuff, man. So I know this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good, good, good. Let's see, where was I on the comments? Uh, Robin says, starting my juice cleanse after Christmas and I feel I may be visited by gout again in my big toe as that's what happened on my last detox. This time though, no matter how painful it may get, I'm going to soldier through and just know it's part of the detox. Yes, that is part of the detox. We can have um, old symptoms flaring up. We can have pain. We can have discomfort. Oh my God, last night I had so much sinusitis. My sinuses, I couldn't stop sneezing. My whole sinuses were all blocked. I think it was the uh, the, the nuts that I had, uh, maybe. Or it could have been some of the, um, I, I was making some of the pastels and I was using, you know, non-GMO, um, I mean, not organic um, cornmeal. So, 
you know, it may have been that. I don't know. It just may have been detox symptoms, but either way, just recognize that everything that you experience in your body when you are doing this is part of the detox symptoms. And it's expected, you can expect to experience all kinds of crazy things when you detox your body. Just remember that you're detoxing what out of your body? That's right, toxins and acidosis and acid and poisons that you've put there. Yeah, yeah, we did it to ourselves, right? Nothing is an accident. It wasn't some fluke thing that, oh my God, I took this and that happened. It's just straight up, you guys, we gotta own it. No, that's acidosis because of stuff I put in my body. If you had a really clean body, and you took a hit of a, let's say, um, uh, the V word, you know, um, and you had a strong reaction to it, chances are pretty good that you were pretty toxic going into that experience. Same thing, Some of I know some of you have taken, I don't really wanna drink melon juice right now because I'm about to go into eating vegetables. And that is one of my, strict rules that I do follow on the food combining thing. Eat your melons separate from everything else. That is a really good idea. I'm just going to go on and monitor this on my, on my YouTube. Good idea. I'm just going to go and Okay. Um, so I see some of your other questions here on the YouTube. YouTube. You also added pink Himalayan salt. Okay, cool. Um, so it is part of the detox and we should not be afraid of the discomfort of pain of any of that stuff. What am I looking for? Oh, God. Right. Don't be afraid of the detox. Just detox. It's just detox. And if it's not detox, it's acidosis because you're not doing a clean uh, protocol right now. And that's OK. It's all right. Just get onto a clean, look at how beautiful that avocado is. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You know, when you cut into an avocado and it's like delicious and lovely inside. Oh, there you are. Yes, here I are. Here I are. Here we all are. Pink Himalayan salt. I will add some of that as well. Uh, let's see, where are we on the comments? Amy, where did you find Detox Your Being YouTube channel? Detox Your Being is a hard channel to find because he doesn't have um, a personalized name as yet. But what I can do is I can put, so if you go, see, if you go to youtube.com forward slash Detox Your Being, you're not gonna find it. But what I will do is um, after, I'm, the dead meat is vibration. Yeah, dead meat, the vibration down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Detox Your Being, um, you're, you're, uh, because you don't have, I think you need a hundred subscribers. You guys, let's go over to Detox Your Beings channel. I'm going to put the link in the description. Just give me a second, and let's all subscribe to him. Let's get his viewer. Let's get him up to a hundred, man. He's got some great stuff. He's a beautiful young soul on this spiritual journey, an old soul in a young body. Let me rephrase that. Um, we are all old souls. Nobody's brand new. Nobody's brand new up in this gig, all right? Nobody is brand new up here. Nobody. We are all old souls coming back to just play, have fun, experience life, work out our soul contracts. You know, we are all here to help wake up the, uh, the, the consciousness and humanity that is on the planet. And if our soul contract is not to wake up, that's okay. That's okay, too. We are not all meant to wake up in this time and space. But when we are ready and when we do, oh, baby, we are in for a ride. We are in for a ride. We are in for a ride, an adventure. So, yes, let's go over to Detox Your Being and get him in here. Get him up to 100 so he can have a personalized YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find a YouTube channel that's not doesn't have its personalized um, name as yet. Really, really challenging to do that. Oh, yes, yeah, cilantro is great for removing toxins from the body. You're right, detox. I mean, rock star. 
So I'm just smashing this all up. It's like a beautiful, chunky guacamole. Look at that. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yes. This is going to be so good. This is going to be so good. So, yeah, dead meat. Mm. Oh, my God, that is so good. I forgot this, the jalapeno. Um, dead meat, when we eat when we eat dead flesh, we need to just be uh, have an awareness and an understanding of what we're doing, okay? Dead meat is dead, decaying flesh inside of your body. And uh, zero angstroms of energy, zero high vibration, uh, packed with all of the emotion and the, the, the hormones and the chemicals that are released when you know, animals are slaughtered, it is, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. And when we get to um, doing up our Bernsey burgers, as soon as we finish up these stuffed tomatoes, and you know what, guys? This is another thing that you can totally make for your family for Christmas. Christmas is coming! Oh, my God, I'm so excited. This is a, a totally a delicious um hors d'oeuvre that you can make for your family and enjoy on Christmas uh, for, for Christmas brunch or for Christmas dinner. We don't have to keep on eating the, um, the old traditional way of eating and, and enjoy our, our family holiday, right? There's so much that we can enjoy together with our families that we can create for ourselves. Like, look at this. Look at that beautiful guacamole. Oh, I didn't put in any sea salt, so let me just put a little pinch of Himalayan sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, because that's just going to bring all of those beautiful flavors together, isn't it? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Look at this. Mmm. That is really good. That is really good, you guys. So what I'm going to do, just going to stuff some of these tomatoes, and then we're going to have a little bite to eat. You know what I'm saying? Emoji King is cutting watermelon. How can you tell if your kidneys are, are, are damaged? Pee in a jar and look for sedimentation. Um a lot of people don't have sedimentation in their urine and that is a problem because that sediment is the lymphatic fluid that is um, the lymphatic waste that is supposed to be out of your body, not in your body. And if it's not coming out, where's it going? So that would be the best one as far as I can tell. Your liver, I don't know, man. Get some blood work done, but why? Assume that everything is in need of repair and go after it. Assume that you need everything healed up and go after it. It's the same protocol no matter what, because everything is caused by the same thing. Acidosis, toxicity, genetically weak material that you got damaged from your parents who had damaged tissue to begin with, or trauma that you've experienced in your body from an uh, an accident or, um, you know, some damage that has happened, all of which can be healed in the body. You know what else I'm going to add to this? I'm going to add a little bit of cumin because I always like a little bit of cumin. I find it gives it a nice earthiness. Oh my God, this is going to be so good. You know how else you could, do you know what else you can do with this? You can get some English cucumbers and you can scoop out the center and you can have tomato and cucumber, avocado hors d'oeuvres. I'm gonna grab a cucumber and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna, we're gonna mix it up, up in here. We're gonna mix it up. I hope you guys are enjoying the kitchen experience with the Real Juicy Detox. I find that I love watching people doing live streams. I find that it can be really just soothing to watch. You know? Oh, 
Oh yeah, baby. Bam. That's some good stuff. That's some good shit. And we got a plate. So let's say you've got some people coming over for Christmas, right? And you want to serve them some delicious, live, vibrant food. Whip up some of this kind of stuff. And uh, they will thank you for it, for keeping it healthy, for keeping it vibrant, for keeping it alive. Oh, my God. And so delicious. Listen, you're not going to. You're not going to feel like you're in want of anything uh, that all those other heavy, um, you know, types of dishes that we tend to enjoy when we go to, you know, um, a Christmas event or a potluck event. You're not going to experience any of the negative fallout from that. Do you ever notice sometimes when you go to Christmas dinner, you're full before the food even gets onto the table just because of all the hors d'oeuvres that you chow down on because you've been waiting for food to get to the table? This is the kind of thing that you can put out for your guests or that you can bring as a guest. Hey, if you're going somewhere, oh, my God, bring something different. Bring something delicious. And bring something alive. Bring something alive that you are going to be able to confidently serve up that is going to um, really be detoxifying for their bodies and just fill them up with so much mm, flavor. Let's just try this one, shall we? So here's here's the one that I made. Here's the one that I made. Let's try this. Mm. Mm. That is so good. That is so good. I hope that you guys make these. Thank you, Rockstar, for the inspiration to do these up. These are delicious. I wanted to do some cucumbers as well to show you guys what the cucumbers would look like. Using the same kind of knife you are using right now, Burns. Please be careful. I'm always careful with my knives. Always careful. That doesn't mean sometimes I don't cut myself. I do. You have to get a dehydrator. Yeah, dehydrators are really going to help you with your... Um, no, I know you meant liver. <laughs> I knew that. Arthritis and body tightness. Okay, so arthritis. What is arthritis? Arthritis, anytime you see itis after, uh, at the end of a term, itis means inflammation. Why inflammation? Why do we get inflammation? Well, we get inflammation when water rushes in because we are acid, we are too acidic in the body. So the body's gonna to wanna to try to wash out some of that acid. Like you would if you had if you had dropped battery acid on your skin and that you're gonna put it under water because you wanna to try to wash that off. But how much water do you need to get on there in order to wash it off? A lot of water. So the body is gonna start dumping and pulling a lot of water and it's gonna impact your body. It's gonna show up as inflammation and pain. Also, arthritis is a, a, a calcium issue, right? When we get arthritis, <clears throat> our body is basically trying to pull calcium out of our bones in order to, uh, to cool down the acid in the system. Parathyroid gland, that's the gland that you need to strengthen and heal when you have arthritis. Yeah, bone and connective tissue governed by the parathyroid gland. So thyroid, parathyroid gland, you got to get to work, baby. You got to get to work. But the good news is, and same thing about body tightness, acids agglomerate, acids cause things to stick together, uh, acids cause things to adhere and have adhesion. Acids tend to make the body inflame, so we might gain weight. It tends to deform things. It's acidosis. Everything boils down to that. Hey, Julia. Oh my God, aren't you beautiful? Hello, thank you so much for popping in. I love that line. Detoxification is the golden key to unlocking your inner world of health and wellness. Yes, health and vitality. Absolutely, babe. Lisa uh, Chadwick, Lisa Rhodes, 
uh, Lisa Pastor, Tina Rollenhall. Oh my God, I love Janita. I love that you always shout out your friends to come and look. Cilantro is great for removing toxins from the body. It is so good. So again, if you guys are just tuning in to the Real Juicy Detox and you're seeing me live and this is your first time maybe, I want to welcome you all. And what we do here at the Real Juicy Detox is I take your questions, I pop up your beautiful things on here on the screen. I answer your detox question. I'm a detox specialist certified by Dr. Robert Morse himself, yes. And I help you guys and myself and my family figure out and apply all of these detox principles. And one of the things that we need to do is we need to, we need to understand and figure out how to create live, vibrant, uh, detoxify friendly foods to put in our bellies after we do our juice cleanse, right? And one of the ways that we do that is with these beautiful, look at that, these beautiful stuffed tomatoes. I will answer your question again, Margie. Let me know if you're here. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That is so good. So what I do in this live class is I make food, I eat food, we prep food together in real time. And after I have my lunch with this, we're going to be making some Bernsey burgers, which is just the most incredible thing that you've ever put in your body. Burgers without beans, without soy products, textured vegetable protein, no, no thank you. Without wheat gluten, no seitan up in here. Mm -mm. We're doing it all with live vegetables, and I cannot wait to show you guys. So stick around. We're going to get to all of it. We're not in any hurry. What else you got to go do? You know what I'm saying? This is what you got to go do. Sinus infection is caused by excessive mucus, excessive mucus. All right. Um, Mike, I'm going to get back to your question on how to detoxify him. Um, I'm, the, the answer is actually the same, Mike, whether you have arthritis, whether you have a sinus infection, whether you have esophagus issues, esophagus, your 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 food pipe you know from your mouth to your stomach whether you have cancer whether you have multiple sclerosis whether you have parkinson's disease whether you have fill in the blank my friend it doesn't matter what your diagnosis is it's all caused by the same thing acid in the body how do you reverse acidity in the body alkaline food alkalinity is how you do it all right so you got to look at everything that you're putting in your body. You have to understand what is the chemistry behind everything that you're putting in your body. And then you just got to get to work at reversing what you're putting in. All right. You got to just look at reversing what you're putting in. Hold on. I got to turn down my volume on this camera. There we go. So same thing. Sinus infection is caused by. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Detox, for being. You're too sweet. Um, sinus infection is caused by an excessive amount of mucus in the diet. It just is. That's you get sinus infection, you get asthma, you get throat issues, you get a lot of mucus in the throat, you get a lot of mucus coating your thyroid and parathyroid glands, leading to arthritis, leading to depression, leading to bone and connective tissue issues, right? So the best way to heal yourself of all of that is to stop putting in the mucus forming food. Understand that if you go onto this kind of protocol, great question, Marcy, uh, Margie, excuse me. <laughs> I have, um, I have all kinds of stuff. I have, they're, they're in the, uh, in the archives, babe, on YouTube here. I will, uh, I encourage you to come over to the YouTube channel because all of the playlists are in there. I need to go get some cucumber to judge this up. Hold on. So just to let you know in brief, well, hold on. Let me see what other questions are here. 
Um, I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown of my testimony, of my story, of how I came to be standing in front of you right now in my detox kitchen, and how you can also um, have incredible vitality and a re full return to your health as well. Let me just get some of this started here, all right? But Crystal says, Mike, I have arthritis and tightness in my body as well. Believe I have serious lymph issues. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You do have serious lymph issues. And it's okay because this will help resolve it. All of the fruits, melons, and berries, all of the vegetables, all of the alkaline food, you're on your path, babe. It's going to take a certain amount of time, but it is coming. And I want to thank Detox Your Being so much for that um that show of appreciation. I love you so, so much. Thank you so much for your blessing. $11.11. .11. I still have yet to figure out how I can customize my super chat. That's a super chat that he just dropped there. I still have a, I've, I've tried to do customized super chats like that for some of the uh, live streams that I watch and I can't get it. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? Um, so what can you do to detox him? You can start on, you can encourage him. First of all, it's about education first, all right? How old is he? That's a good question. How old is he? You can detox everything in your body. Uh-oh, standing by. What are you standing by for? What are you standing by for? Uh, Crystal says, Burns, I made a version of this guacamole last night and mixed it with my salad so good. Oh, my God, awesome. It is looking yummy. Hi, Gwyneth. So good to see you here, babe. Let me wash off this. Yes, and I know I do not wash my vegetables long enough or properly enough, but let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice these cucumbers. You can slice them a little bit thicker if you want, but I wouldn't go any thinner than this. And then what I'm going to do is get my, these little melon ball scoopers are a really handy tool in the kitchen. I'm just going to scoop out and detox your being. This is the kind of thing that your family will love too. You know, right before dinner when, when, when it's like, ah, I want a little something, something instead of the usual salad, Bust out some of these things, man. Put these on your on your on your menu for your family. I think they'd really love it. So I'm just scooping out with the melon baller. You see how cute that is? Look at that. Look at that. And then you can just fill it. Oh baby. Oh baby. And then I have here some of that creamy garlic tahini dressing that we made the other day. O M G. Stop it. Stop it. Perfect. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, that creamy tahini dressing. Mm. <laughs> that is so good. So good. Mm. I was just thinking yesterday, we need a recipe from one of the guys. And there you go, Rockstar Ruiz. Muchas gracias. Yes, Rockstar Ruiz. This is a beautiful, beautiful recipe. I'm going to put a little bit more. Actually, let me just try it with this um, um, tahini dressing on the bottom and then some of the guac on top. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. So many ways to do this. There's so many ways to, 50 ways to love your food. 50 ways to leave your lover. Mm. 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 If any of you want that dressing, <laughs> Let me show you the image of that dressing. So if you want to go check out this dressing, the one that I just did, um, the, this one, the tahini, I made this raw tahini dressing the other day. 
It basically tastes like hummus without the chickpeas. Mm. Just no words at the end of the day, you know? To have this kind of beautiful food to feed your family during the holiday time. And we're going to get to my favorite Trinidadian food, the pastels. But first, I'm hungry. And Rockstar was like, man, I made a great salad last time. I'm like, what's your dressing? Come on, let's go. Let's make your dressing. And then I'm like, I'm hungry. <laughs> let's make something to eat. Look at this. A little canapé. Mm-hmm. So good. So nutritious. And so delicious. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Are you guys going to make this? You guys should totally make this. Where are we on the comments? Where are we on the comments? I'm going to talk, talk about my, my story in just a second, Margie. I hope you're still here. Let me know in the comments, okay? Let's see. Yes, and you had cucumber in your salad. Yeah, cucumber. I love cucumber in my salad, too. Mmm. Yum, indeed. So what you can do to detox him, my friend, he's 40 and you are 42. Okay, you're not going to do anything to detox him. He's got to do what he needs to do to detoxify himself if he wants to. Is he interested? Does he want to? What is his stand on it? Does, is he ready to give up, basically, is he ready to give up his addiction to the stuff that's killing him? I wasn't ready until I was ready. You got to be ready for this, right? You got to be ready to, I'm really digging this cucumber. I mean, the tomatoes are good too, but the cucumber is something about the cucumber. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You're on it. Let's do this. Okay. Let's go, baby. December 27th to December 31st, we are doing a, a startup, a warm-up to our 21-day juice cleanse that starts on January the 1st. Look at this. Look at how beautiful that is. I can see you taking this as a whole platter full of these tomatoes and cucumbers mixed like this to your next family gathering, preparing this, putting this out there for your family. You know, brunch, make brunch really delicious and really alive this Christmas. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm. You lost me, screen went black, Amy. Okay, we're good now, right? Don't feed your disease, please. No more acid-forming food. Thank you. Yep. But, you know, some people just have to experience it because they don't want to give up the stuff that they want to hold on to. I get it. I get it. Everybody's on their own spiritual path too, right? Ah, yes, you need the tahini dressing recipe. Let me put it up right now. Mm. Let me pull it up here for you. Where is it? Here it is. So take a screenshot of that. That is the tahini dressing. And I swear to God, I can eat this by the spoonful. 
and I'm starting to get, my belly is starting to get nice and full, which is great because now I can move on to making the pastels and not be like, oh my God, I'm hungry. What am I going to eat? Mm. And you know what else I need to do? I need to go put some socks on because I'm starting to feel chilly. screenshot for the tahini dressing, which I'm sure you've done. Let's grab something else here. Okay. Do you guys get that? And we're back. And we're back. 100% water fruits will get rid of arthritis pain fast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Should I go to the emergency room? <laughs> no. Um, if you need to, yes, go, but probably not. I love hummus too. So hummus is um, one of those things that I will allow into my program, even though they are on the acid side of chemistry because of their high protein count, the, the chickpeas, it's still one of those things that I allow into my diet with confidence you know I'm just looking at this mess and i'm like you know my penchant for extreme cleaning when i'm in the kitchen but first let's let's have another one of these look at that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get excited, Mike. This is going to be a big year for you. 2021, it's coming, baby. This is my first comment about your non-cooking. The dressing looks good on the cucumber. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've made this tahini dressing and put it in hummus. Oh my God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Rockstar's amazing mixture. Let me put it up on the screen and you can screenshot it, babe. Mm. So good, my belly is so happy right now. Here we go. And a pinch of Himalayan, pink Himalayan sea salt. <clears throat> and that is what I've got in the bottom here underneath the tahini dressing. And you guys, it is so good. And they're so fun to eat. You just pop them in your mouth. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to save this cilantro. Mm, you know what? Let me just, let me just uh, mix up a little bit more of this dressing with what I've got here. Are you guys enjoying the, the cooking? Are you guys enjoying this? Are you having fun hanging out with me in my kitchen? In the real juicy detox, oops, kitchen. I'm going to put all of this into here. Oh, maybe I chop up these cucumbers so that they're smaller, right? Did you get that? And scroll back down. Mike says, I cook. Okay, good. Cooking is good. I like uncooking though. Um, <clears throat> Mike, when you keep your food raw, and as close to nature as possible, you don't 
cook out the goodness of the nutrition that's in there. And if you're gonna cook anything, make sure to start off with alkalizing ingredients in the first place, uh, when, when at all possible. Whenever possible. That's not to say that you can't have some of the other stuff. Again, the garbanzo beans, um, <clears throat> you know, the good stuff, you know, non-negotiables for me, however, mean that I'm not going to put in cooked food that has any beans, any meat, any bread, any grains, any processed refined sugar, all of that stuff. That's that's not going in. If I'm going to sweeten anything, I'm going to use dates to sweeten up my recipes or raisins, maple syrup. So I've just got the rest of the cilantro with some of that tahini dressing and the leftover, the last little bit of the avocado. Oh yeah. And then you can also use this. Mm. To stuff some of these, get some more of these cucumber stuff. Cucumber slices stuffed. If you guys don't have a little melon baller like that, you can go ahead and use a small spoon. But you know what? These are so cheap. The dollar store. Go and grab yourself a, a little 99 cent melon scooper. So you can do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's cilantro. You can also put this in a nice container and you can have a bunch of, um, you know, raw veggies that you just slice up and chop up on the side for dipping. You know, look at that, right? You can do this. You can totally do this. This this tastes so good, you guys. Mm. Perfect. You're welcome, Crystal. Yeah, we're all good now. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Thanks, Amy. Took me almost a year to give up beans and rice, even though it was causing pain. I know it's such a cultural staple for you, right? Yeah, for a lot of us, most cultures have a staple rice and beans dish. In Trinidad, we call it palau. Or pigeon peas and rice. And I freaking miss that shit, man. I make a wicked palau but not anymore. I'm going to put this into the fridge in a second. I'm going to put that over on that side of the counter. But yes, this was a little fun sidebar on the Trini Pastel cooking experience today, but that's good stuff, baby. My belly is happy. Oh my God, I totally could have put some sprouts on that. <laughs> I see the sprouts over there. Okay, so I'm just going to get that into the fridge. Let me put that in the fridge now. Let me get some saran wrap on top of that. We're going to be starting to prep the veggies now for the, the Trini pastels. Yeah, that was a good lunch. So you guys see that lunch doesn't have to be heavy in order to fill you up. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the eating experience. It doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun finger food. And you know what? You serve that to your kids, your kids will be happy. Your kids will be happy. Give them lots of energy. 
Let me put this in the fridge along with the cilantro and the cucumber. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we're back and we're continuing on with our <clears throat> cleaning up. That's what we're continuing on with first. I'm gonna just clean up this area because I like to work in a tidy environment, even though sometimes it doesn't seem or feel like that. always good to to aim for a clean work surface at any rate which can be a challenge when you've got so many things and ingredients everywhere oh my god okay <clears throat> are we ready are we ready let's get this show on the road Glad I'm not cooking on something. I've been dead 45 minutes. I'd be dead 45 minutes ago. Oh my God, you're hilarious. Holding your breath. What are you holding your breath for? Don't hold your breath. Breathe, my friend. Breathe in that good ass prana. Could you tell a difference the second time you made it with the hemp seeds? Um, probably. Um, she's talking about the, the hemp dressing. Cindy's talking about the hemp dressing. Probably a little bit. Every dressing is different when I make it anyhow, right? Hey, Dr. St Dr. Strange, how are you? This is Mr. Is, is Mr. T your father? That is funny. No, no, he is not. I don't have the gold chains on. That would have, that would have been a dead giveaway if I was Mr. T's daughter. <laughs> Robin says, thank you, Burns and Rockstar Ruiz. You're welcome, babe. You're welcome. Yes, always fun. Always fun in here. Always fun and enlightening. Hey, Anne-Marie, so glad that you are here. Oh, boy, what? Hey, Moss. Moss is back. Welcome back, Moss. Is lemon okay while avoiding acid? Great question. You really want to go and check out Detox 102. Because in that, I explain in full detail why, but I'll let you know why now as well. I explain though why um, it's not about the flavor and the flavonoids and the pucker that you feel in your mouth that determines whether something is acid or not. It is about the inorganic material and minerals that are left behind in the body once that food has been digested. So when we digest food, when we consume food, what's left behind is either uh, an acid forming residue or it is alkaline forming. Now, what does that mean? Come on, Burns. You're talking in riddles, man. What do you mean? Well, they take all of these different types of foods and the way that they test to see whether it is acid or alkaline after your body has used it is that they put it through a process where they burn it down to an ash. And that represents the digestive process. After they burn it down into, the, into this ash, they mix it together with some distilled water, and then they measure the pH level or the, the amount of acid in that solution. They measure that. And that is what gives us the reveal of whether something is acid forming in your body, meaning once it's broken down, is it going to form an acid residue or an alkaline residue? That is what determines acidity or alkalinity, right? That's one of the two measures that we use. And then the other way that acidity or alkalinity is measured in the body is by its nitrogen component and the phosphorus in it. 
so anything that is high protein is going to be more nitrogen rich and that is also going to um, show up as, uh, as acid. So they use a combination of those two things and I'm just gonna put up onto the screen so you can screen shoot it right now, uh, Mike, for yourself and your brother. But this is showing, this is showing the acid and alkaline uh, nature of food. So check this out. Here it is right here. So feel free to screen shoot this. This is also in um, one of the highlight reels on my Instagram account. You guys come on over, check it out there. And if you're not following me on the gram, you should be. I do a lot of um, Instagram stories before and after class, when I'm out on our adventures, you get to see a little bit behind the scenes of my personal life, um, recipe ideas that I, that, I, that I drop over there. Uh, but on my Instagram page, I have this image. It's in the Detox 102 highlight reel. And I highly encourage you guys to go on over and get all of the screenshots of all of the cards that we used and that I had for, um, for our Detox 102 class and Detox 101 is also on there. Um, so it's not about how something tastes that determines whether something is acid or alkaline. It is about the chemistry that's left behind in the body once it has been metabolized. For example, cookies. That doesn't taste acid. That can't be acid forming, right? Well, anything made with processed uh, complex carbohydrates is going to leave behind an excess amount of carbon molecules as it breaks down. And the body has to do something with those excess carbon molecules. And what it does is that it transmutes it into, converts it into carbonic acid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the body has this carbonic acid residue that's left behind after you eat a cookie. How does a cookie taste? Cookie doesn't taste acid, right? Cookie tastes sweet. Sweet must be good. No, 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 no. Um, so that is what determines whether something is acid or alkaline. Not the taste, not the taste, not the taste. But the chemical residue that's left behind after the body has metabolized it, that's what causes it. Uh, I made raw fruit pie with dates and raisins as the crust. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oh my gosh. Raisins is a good idea. Yes, raisins is a good idea for sure. Raisins are dried fruit. So raisins are on the definitely list. And let me tell you what, in my pastels, I need me some raisins. Moss, what do you usually typically have in your pastels? Do you guys make pastels? Moss is one of our new Juicy Detoxers, our new Juicy Detox friend from Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, indeed. Let me go see if I have any other mushrooms, because this is the amount of mushrooms that I have right now, ready to get chopped up in phase number one of uh, getting this raw vegan meat filling ready to go. I've also got some chestnuts, which are alkaline. Yes, they are. Uh, so if you wanted to keep your, your, your Bernsey burgers and or your pastels completely raw, then I wouldn't add in the chestnuts. Also, if you don't have access to chestnuts, don't worry about it. You don't need to have them in. Just add more bulk with your mushrooms or with your other vegetables so uh, so that you just have enough, you know, you create a bowl that's approximately this big full of chopped uh, vegetables. And this is a fairly big bowl. All of the ingredients, by the way, and the recipe for what I'm using for this is in the description of this video. So you can go and check that out. Yeah, that pie sounds delicious. Oh my God. And by the way, lemons are one of the top uh, cleansing fruits for the body. Um, Dr. Morris has a lemonade juice cleanse that he recommends doing if you want to really amplify. That's almost like at the very top of the accelerated detox 
protocol. You can do uh, a lemon fast, you can do a grape fast, but both of those, one of the highest um, uh, detox fruits, one of the most electric fruits, meaning that they contain the most electrolytes. lights. Uh, so very, very powerful, extremely, extremely powerful. What is your recipe, Detox Your Being? I made a raw fruit pie with dates and raisins as the crust. I want your recipe. Drop your recipe. By the way, Detox, do you have a video title I can search to find you? Okay, so let me do this right now. Let me pull up Detox Your, uh, your Being's YouTube page. And I'm going to put it in the comments of, uh, uh, sorry, in the description of this video. I'm going to put his link. I put his link in the description of one of the other videos where I think the first video where I met you, Moss. Oops, something went wrong. Okay, that's okay. YouTube. YouTube. Oh, I wonder what, where does this one go? So I'm going to put Detox Your Beings. Um, uh, channel. In the description, I was just watching your December 2020, December 21. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, you're such a sweetheart, Detox, your being. I love you so much, my friend. You're so awesome. Okay, so let me get the, and you're up to 50 subscribers? Okay, check this out. Let's get Detox, your being, up to um, up to 100 so he can go and get a customized channel. Okay, so let me go into here. Ooh, did I not save all of that? Mm. Let me go back and let me go into um, today's video. Just bear with me. I'm just doing a little bit of admin stuff right now. I'm just, I'm just updating. Oh, first of all, we need to put the monetization as on for this mofo. You know what I'm saying? Okay, monetization on for this video. All right, so now I'm going to just adjust the, at the bottom of this, the description over here. I'm gonna put it here, detox your being. All right, so I just added in detox your being. I just added in your, um, your, YouTube channel information in the description. Just scroll down to the bottom. You might need to refresh this. There we go. Refresh your stream in order to see it. There we go. Let me just double check that it's on there. Detox your being. Yes, it is. Bam. All right. All right, baby. We are in business. So, let me get back to my. Where is my? Where is? Add to stream. There we go. So it's right there for you, Moss. I got you, man. You were the 50th subscriber. I already found it. Awesome. Awesome. You guys go over and check out our, our beautiful friend, Detox Your Being. I love raisins in my pastel. Yes, me too. I need it. Kelly, I need a rehab, but I'm going to make fudge before. You need a rehab, but now first you're going to make fudge. What does that mean, Kelly? Can you be more specific? Can I talk you off that ledge? If you want to make fudge, go for a raw vegan sweet fudge, okay? Look one up on the internet, on the interweb, on the YouTube. Please don't make a regular sugar um, fudge before you come back into 
detox. What are you talking about? I just ordered David cookies. I ate five of them with two cups of coffee. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Wake up, bitch. <laughs> In a most affectionate way. Kelly. It's okay, babe. It's okay. You are right. You're all right. You're just having a moment. You are just having a, a moment. All right? Don't freak out. Don't freak out. You're okay. You're okay. All right? It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. I'm just going to rough chop my mushrooms. Oh, Kelly. I know, baby. It's a hard... It's a freaking hard time of year, man. You're stress eating. That's all. That's all. Don't 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 overthink it. Don't overthink it. Be patient with yourself. Love yourself. If you're if you're craving some of that sweet stuff, find a good raw vegan fudge recipe. If I wasn't deep into this um, recipe already, I'd be making fudge with you right now. You know what I'm saying? Right here live with you. But I got to get this uh, this going. It's okay, honey. It's okay. You're all right. You're all right. You're okay. Look, you got to cry it out. Cry it out. got to get in touch with yourself in order for you to, you know, move the energy in the right direction. It's okay. 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 We love you. We love you, baby. We love you. We love you. All right. Hmm. Oh, I got my dates. They are so soft and beautiful. Yes, please tell me again. No, really. I'm not, it's not a moment. I'm thinking, how in the hell have I gained this 30 pounds in a year of healthy eating? Well, anytime we gain weight, what do we know? It's our body reacting to acidosis. And we know, Kelly we know that you didn't gain those 30 pounds from eating healthy. You gained those 30 pounds from eating healthy, but then eating in between all of that, you know, the lamb, the lamb that you were eating all in the middle of eating healthy, right? All of that lamb is all acid, babe. It is. That's why you gained 30 pounds. The pounds that we gain in weight are there because the body is rushing in with inflammation. That's all. So you know what I want you to do, Kelly? I want you to thank your body. I want you to say thank you to your body. My God, thank you so much for protecting me from my own indiscretion and from my own addiction to this meat. Thank you. I'm sorry. Do a little hopo no hopo no po ono or whatever, however you call that. Ask yourself for forgiveness. Remind yourself that you are okay, that you're trying to do the best that you can do. Understand that these addictions to the sweet stuff is in particular is because of the candida that's in your body. Kelly, I want to see you get on the herbs, baby. What herbs are you taking again? If you wanna, if you wanna let me know that, I I I really think you should be on the parasite M. Parasite M is excellent for the candida, right? Kill off that candida, baby. Kill off that candida, All right? Christmas is a really challenging time. Why are my headphones still giving me? I can still hear a little bit of the sound through my headphones. There we go. You know, Kelly, we're with you. We are with you. We are with you. Emoji King, I don't know what you've been trying to get my attention with for over an hour. I keep asking you, what is up, my friend? What is up? I'm here, babe. I'm here. What? Are, what what's up, babe? What's up? 
Mm -hmm. Tell me, what, what have you been, you know how this works though, Emoji King. It takes me a while to go through and to see all of the comments. You know how it works, but what's up? What's up? What's up, Buttercup? I don't ever want you to feel like I'm ignoring you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, but what's up, babe? The lemons I juiced were powerful. Had to stay by the bathroom, LOL, so I mixed it with orange juice. Yeah, that's an indication of how powerful those lemons are. Lemons will move your bowels. They're the most electric food. Your bowel movements are an electric experience. It's a neurological electric experience, bowel movements. So when you put really high electrical energetic, powerfully astringent fruit into your system, you are going to experience it big time. And for a lot of us, I remember when I did the 21 day um, grape feast in October there, 21 days of grape juice, holy moly, the stuff I cleared out of my bowels was just on another level, I tell you. I tell you what? That was crazy. And a lot of us who did the 21 days of great, or any amount of days of great, we were like, oh, this is kicking my butt. Like, now I know why Dr. Moore says that. You want to, you, you you do a 21 day great pass, you are going to kick your butt. It's like, Aww. yeah, no shit. But it's also going to kick that acidosis right out of your system too, because it's that powerful. That powerful. Uh, Cindy says, why do you have to turn the monetization on? Why doesn't it stay on once your channel is monetized? Great question, because you might have uh, you might have content that you don't want to monetize. So um, you have to turn it on for every video, whether it is a live stream or a um, just an uploaded video that you've pre-recorded. You have to turn it on for for each for each one and you know what when I first got monetized it, gosh I guess two weeks ago now I went in there and turned the monetization on for all of my videos and then I started to get they they demonetize like half of my videos I'm like what the hell so you can appeal that decision and I appealed it and they turned it back on for all of my videos. So that is great. I'm really excited about that. All right. So we've got our, our mushrooms chopped, rough chopped up. And now I'm going to put them in the spinny thing, in the hand um, uh, food processor. Because I don't like doing this in the, in the big electric food processor. I find I have more control over the chopping the texture when I do it I'm so excited we're making pastels you guys we're making Bernsey burger pastels super excited hey kitty do you want more food yeah okay let me get this kid this kitty some food Let's see here. Let the spoon. There you go. Hi, Dottie. Hi, babe. How are you? Did you have a good nap? Mm -hmm. Okay, kitty, you go for that one. Don't, don't hijack kitty's bowl. Kitty, come here. Your food is over here, babe. Here. Yes, I feed we feed our cats a raw carnivore diet, but we also mix it in with some canned food from, from time to time.
Okay, where are we at? Awesome, Mike. Awesome. Yay. Let's get our friend. He's got some great content, you guys. All of his content is really great, heartfelt, um, beautiful to see uh, a beautiful young man expressing his love for this spiritual work and um, putting it out there for, for whoever this resonates with. I love this little chopper, by the way. This is one of those OXO brands. Is it a version of Big Grips? I don't know, but it's the OXO brand. And it's got a little lock, so it locks down onto this kind of countertop, non porous surface. And I'm just going to go ahead and start chopping up the shrooms. Let's get some mushrooms going here. Kelly said, I ate so much bread yesterday too. Confu confessions of a food addict. Yeah, we're all food addicts. Notice that it's shaking the uh, the countertop a little bit, so I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> how do I solve that problem for us, though? Because I don't really like that. Hold on. Trying to raise up my surface. Hey, sweetie. Expose my camera real fast. Hold on. Okay, are we good? Are we good? I think we're good. Okay, we're somewhat good. Okay, I think we're good. We're good. Okay, so I just wanted to move the camera. I had to put a little, I had to put my tripod on a little stool over there. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and chop. Now this is, if we start timing from the time that we, hang on. This is one of those recipes that is a little bit time consuming. I'm not going to lie. Be prepared. That's why I said this class is going to be a long class because it's going to take us a while to get all the things chopped. But if you're doing this in real time with me, you're going to see that this is in fact pretty much how long it takes. So if you're doing this alongside of us and you're cooking in real time, awesome. Awesome. Cindy says, no. I know, babe. Raw vegan fudge sounds great. I'm telling you, there's so many great recipes online. You do not need to go down this dark road of eating all of these high carbonic acid food. Kelly, 
I had to eat cooked food today because it's all I have right now. I need to get veggies. I feel sick. I don't know why. Well, I don't know. What, what did you eat in particular? What was it that was cooked? You know, you might just feel a little bit detoxy. That's what I always say. I don't feel good. I'm feeling very detoxy today. When you are become more aware in your body, Moss, and you start being more present in your body as well, you are going to notice more when your body doesn't feel good compared to before you became more aware of what you were doing in your body. Yeah, that's, that's truth. You're going to start feeling when you eat something that doesn't agree with you and you're aware of how your body is feeling. You're not just dumbing it and numbing it with other, you know, food addictions, right, Kelly? And you really become aware of how this is making you feel. You start to feel crappy when you eat crappy stuff. You start to feel sluggish and more heavy when you eat heavy cooked food, right? So that is something to be aware of. <clears throat> yes, please tell me again. No, it's not It's not a moment. I'm thinking, how the hell have I gained 30 pounds <coughs> in a year of healthy eating? Well, you can tell yourself you're eating healthy all you want, Kelly girl. You know, let me give you some straight up Burnsy truth. <coughs> From my own experience of eating shit food. Not eating shit. That would be gross. We can tell ourselves we're eating healthy all we want. The body doesn't listen to that. The body just listens and reads what is the chemistry that you are putting into it. And the result, cause and effect, it shows up in your body. Your body doesn't lie. All right, it's not lying. So if you gained 30 pounds in the last year, guaranteed you are eating an acid diet. Even if it's a little bit of lamb, any amount of lamb, it's very, very toxic to the body. It shuts down your kidneys. It prevents the kidneys from filtering. So a little Burnsy truth for you. A little Burnsy truth for you. If you are eating an acid-forming diet, you will gain weight. If you are eating an alkaline-forming diet, your weight will normalize because your, your body no longer has to uh, buffer the acid with inflammation. If you're feeling any pain in your body, that's your body telling you uh, you're acidic. If you're not doing 80% raw, if, however, you're doing 80% raw and 80% alkaline, uh, and you're doing that consistently. You're not cheating. You're not having your moments where it's like, oh, you know, oh, yeah, I forgot that time. I fell asleep in, at, at, at the wheel and just stuffed my face full of carbs. Yeah, you know, processed carbs, complex carbs, acid-forming carbs. If you can be really, really honest with yourself, you start realizing that, Oh, this is truth in my body. We need to become more aware of what we're doing. And we need to be get really honest about what we're doing. We need to get really honest about what's going on in the body. This 2021, Dr. Morse has said, according to him, and I would tend to believe him. God knows. God knows. I've, I've been really examining the things that he's said and looking at how it affects my body, looking at how it affects my clients' bodies, looking at how what the testimonials are that you guys have shared. Oh, and by the way, Margie, I realize I have not shared my story, my testimonial as yet. I have not given you the inside scoop into the burns and what her story is. I'll get there. I'll get there. Maybe in this video. I will get there. I will get there in this video. But for now, I'm trying to answer questions and <laughs> prepare food at the same time. So I just remembered, Margie, 
that I, um, I need to come back to your question about what my story is, my testimonial. God bless you all. Yes, indeed. Anne Marie says, I love raw mushrooms, but I heard the other day they should be cooked. Oh, yeah? Okay. There's a lot of things that we should do and that we shouldn't do. It can get really confusing, right? Holy crap. Eat this. Don't eat that. Cook this. Don't cook that. If you're gonna cook a vegetable, mushroom would be a great vegetable to cook because it's alkaline. I mean, I know Dr. Morris is like kind of like, nah, mushrooms, I don't know. That was from a few years ago. I don't know if he still is, um, if that is still his position on mushrooms or not. Here's my position on mushrooms. I put stuff into my body and then I observe my body. I look at what are the symptoms that I'm feeling, how is it affecting my, my, my detox, I look at it all. Whenever you get information, I was listening to Lori Ladd. Lori Ladd is an amazing soul who does a lot of work on the planet right now, helping us navigate these uncertain times. I need to blow my nose. Give me one second. And Lori brought up a great point. Lori brought up a great point about trusting your own truth. Don't believe what I say about anything. Don't believe what Dr. Moore says. Use your, uh, your inner guidance as a guide for yourself. When you hear information, ask yourself, how does that resonate with me? Is that something that really truly resonates on my level with my own awareness of truth okay because there are a lot of different truths out there there are a lot of people who think that you shouldn't have this much fruit in your diet and there are a lot of people that think that you know eating high, a, a, a diet high in vegetables and very high predominantly on nuts is healthy for you you know marcus and kara of that the healthy life i love them uh, don't really agree at all with what they say about you know their their, what they think about fruit, a fruit diet. You know, Marcus still talks about how all fruits have too much sugar in them. I think he's really um, un, uneducated in that area, if I may say so. Um, but I still love a lot of the stuff that they put out, and I still enjoy watching a lot of their, their content, and I've learned a lot about raw vegan cooking from them. I'm just getting these... Um, roasted chestnuts right now which i get actually from dollarama i actually have bought them different brands from different places and i honestly prefer and love the brand from dollarama the most so they just got theirs back in stock one second okay that was i, I apologize for that I do apologize for that. Are we good now? I do apologize. Yeah, we're good. Mm, so when you hear people say, oh, you shouldn't eat this or you shouldn't eat that, I strongly encourage you to use your own intelligence on things. So I'm just going to chop this up. Do your research. I should have just put one one of those bags in here. Do your own research, you guys. Do your own research. <laughs> I'm just looking at myself on the replay. It's funny. 
That is funny. Do your own research. Use your own intelligence. Use your own intellect. Use your own inner being. Ask yourself, does that make sense? Does that sound like something that resonates with my inner being? If you hear me talking about, you know, that meat is acid forming and not very good for your, your health overall or at all, don't believe me. Do a little bit of, educate yourself a little bit. See what might be on the other side of that for you. If you're resistant to it, that's fine. Don't, don't keep on moving. You know what I'm saying? Keep on moving. But if it does resonate with you and you want to look further into the science behind it, I got you covered, babe. Detox 101 and Detox 102, my two master classes, are a great place to learn about all that kind of stuff. Right? So the same thing. Mushrooms, yay, nay. I don't know. I don't think we should get too fanatical on, I, I hope you should only eat this or only eat that or don't eat this or don't eat that. You decide for yourself, basically. Put this stuff in your body. See how your body feels. How does it how does your body react to uh, to certain foods? Do you get more inflamed? Does, do your sinus infections flare up when you eat certain food? I know for me, eating nuts, yesterday we bought some nuts when we were out, and I was like, I don't wanna have too many of these, and I think I had too many of them. They were delicious. And when I say too many, I don't mean like I ate half the bag. You know what I'm saying? I ate a few handfuls, maybe three handfuls of those nuts. And it was like, mm, I don't really think I should have done that. Because by the time we got home, I was miserable. My mood was off. My tummy was off. My sinuses were like all hella inflamed. And I was just like, I don't think I like those nuts at all. Not at all. Find, find a good fruitarian man or woman. <laughs> Unfortunately, for a lot of people who come to this lifestyle, we come to this lifestyle already in a partnership with somebody, right? So I have four of those bags of chestnuts, so 400 grams of chestnuts, roasted chestnuts that are going in. So again, if you wanted to have this 100% raw, then don't put in the roasted chestnuts. After we mix all of these, we get everything chopped up and mixed and blended in here, we are going to be dehydrating this. But again, if you're gonna be making this into pastels, you're gonna probably be steaming that pastel and I actually will um, I will cook some of these up now again when it comes to um, you know finding a good fruitarian man or woman you might not be in that position all right you might already be in a committed relationship with somebody or even having been married to them for several decades right So if you can find a good fruitarian man or woman, awesome. But that's not everybody's um, experience all the time. Now, when I do my, my peppers for this, let me get out some of these peppers here. Typically what I do, oh, that may not be a good one. That is definitely not a good one. That might be still good. Oh, damn it. Give me one second here. Let me just let me just see what of these vegetables are salvageable. When I usually I was gonna say when I oh yeah. 
This one is totally fine. I was going to say that when I usually do my vegetables, my peppers, I usually do them in this um, in this chopper. Whereas a lot of the other vegetables that I'm going to be processing, I'm going to be putting through my, my juicer with the homogenizer blade on there. Or no, I'm going to juice them and squeeze out all the juice. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. There's a, there's a few different ways that you can approach preparing um, your veggies for this. I just want to make sure that whatever way I prep them, that I have them as dry as possible because I want the mixture of my, of my recipe to be really, 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 really dry. And that when you squeeze it together, then it holds together some. I don't want it to be soaking wet. I don't want it to be sopping wet as we say in Trinidad. I want it to be just moist enough that it will hold together, but not so, I'm not feeling this one. I am not feeling this one. I'm not feeling that one. So I am going to forego on these. These were some of peppers that I had bought at the sale aisle of, of um, the, the grocery store, Farm Boy, when I went the other day. And, um, I think some of them really should have been consumed right away, and I left them in the fridge for a while. So those ones we're not going to use. I think this one is still good. How are we doing out here? How are we doing? Why do I crack you up? Burns, you crack me up. I've been trying to get your attention for over an hour. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. My husband told me he wanted his old wife back. 30 pounds is a lot of weight. Yeah, babe, I'm sorry. I want you to have your old, I want you to not have your old weight, your old self back. I want you to have a brand new, a brand new healed self back because, yeah, it's hard though, man. That's a, that's an owie comment. I want my old wife back. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. I'm struggling. I'm trying my best. I'm trying, I really am trying hard. I'm trying to figure this shit out, you know, babe? I do apologize. But I'm gonna tell you straight up, dear husband of mine, me having to cook all this frigging acid food for you is doing me in, all right? I'm just letting you know, I want the old me back too, straight up. I know you don't wanna eat like this and I know that you're not on this path, but my God, I want you to understand how hard it is for me to cook all of this food, all of this lamb, all of this, you know, delicious stuff that I now realize is acidic in my body and is causing a lot of this uh, excess weight. That's what this is. So I want the old me back too, but I can't get there eating this kind of food. And the more of this kind of food I prep for you and wa me watching myself poison you as well, I ain't helping. If you really want to help me, how about you join this journey with me? How about we do this together? Can you help me out? I need help. I need your help. I need your help. For example, can we talk here? Of course we can talk here. <laughs> I swear I'm thinking about just strictly eating meat to drop this damn weight. All right, Kelly. Okay, babe. I don't know what to say to that. I don't know what to say to that. You think that eating, going keto is going to help you lose this weight. just juice all of the vegetables so that they all get pulverized and really um, uh, chopped up really fine. So I'm going to prep all of the vegetables that I'm going to be bringing into this mixture. I'm going to prep all of them first. So first I have my sweet, sweet peppers. 
And right now, in case you're just tuning in and you're just finding me, hi, welcome. Oh my gosh, you're here. Somebody's life is going to change today. Somebody's life, the lamb and hummus. That's right, my friend. That's what's kicking your butt. And not in a good detoxy way. Yes, I'm thinking of eating just lamb. All right. Don't do it. It's so acidic. You know what, though, Cindy? She knows that. Um, this is not, we're not, this is, just, Kelly, you've been here since the beginning. You've been here since the beginning. I give up. No, I don't. Emoji King. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Is this a class, right? I'm a terrible student. Babe, what's up? What's going on? You know how this deal works. You know what we do here. What's up? If you feel like you need to go to the emergency room for any reason, go to the emergency room. Yes. That's my answer. Yes. It's not about what I think. It's about how you think. It's about what you're experiencing in your body. And this is true for everybody. For everybody. Let me bring up the banner. Let me bring up the note to show you guys, to remind you. Okay. Hmm. Okay, here we go, Emoji King. If as you cleanse, you experience side effects that you feel you need to go to, such that you feel you need to go to the emergency room, go. Go. Do not pass. Go. Do not. No, that's a different thing. That's going to jail. Go. Dr. Morris has spent many years working in them. There's, they're there to help you in a crisis. It's just too bad that most ER personnel don't understand about the detox process and the healing crisis during these times. It is helpful to review these class notes so you are aware of what to expect when you are detoxing. Okay, so that goes for everybody and anybody. If you are having an experience such that you feel, oh my God, I think I need to go to the emergency room, please go. Okay, please go. <laughs> hmm. Okay, why go to the emergency room? Is that what you asked? I don't remember asking that. Yep, truth, my internal temperature is so damn hot. It's not a hot flash. Well, your internal temperature is so hot because of the acid that you're putting in your body. And if you think, Kelly, after all that we have been through, after all of the classes that you have sat through, if you think that eating lamb is going to make you lose weight and is not going to continue that acid burn, then I don't know what else I got for you. I got no other words. Do it. If you believe that 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 eating um, acid forming food, lamb, is going to help you lose weight, then by all means, I wish you well on that experiment that you're on. Um, I need to check my I need to check my ingredients here. Do I put jalapeno into this mixture? Uh, I don't see it. So I'm going to put it over here. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I am going to put the rest of this bag. I, so that will make almost 500 um, grams of chestnuts. I know you're just talking out of desperation, Kelly, babe. I know that. I understand. Listen, I wish I had a magic wand. All right? I do. But you are the creator of your life experience here on this earth. You are the creator of your body.
not me, not anybody else. You are the one that is making the choice of what you lift up to your mouth on a daily basis. And you are the only person who has any control over what goes in your body. Not your husband, not me, not anybody in this class, just you. Just the good old Kelly Belly. Yes, indeed. And I really want you to let go of this idea, Kelly, that you've been doing this protocol for a year and it hasn't worked. Please don't, don't fool yourself into thinking that. Mm -mm. Nope. Because if you did this for a year, you wouldn't be experiencing the excess weight, which is just inflammation in the body. Okay. Delivering Whole Foods groceries, but I have my earbuds today so I can stay in class. Awesome, rock star. So glad to hear that. I don't need the truth. I need you to slap me. I'm trying to slap you with some truth, babe. But this is my truth. It's not your truth. It's not your truth until you put it into place and until you start acting on that as your truth. There you go. I slapped you. Did I slap some sense into you? I love you, Kelly girl. I love you, babe. I really do. But you're on your journey and you're struggling right now and that is okay. No big deal. No big deal. Listen, you'll come to your senses. You'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe, I feel so embarrassed. I can't believe that, oh my God, what was I thinking? And I'll be like, it's okay. We all go through shit. We all go through stuff. You are entering in a very deep emotional place in your life coming into Christmas with, you know, the stuff, the stuff, the trauma that you are healing from. This is a hard time and you're just medicating yourself with food. That's all. Deep cut like an hour ago. That's not the point, though. The point is quite miraculous. Well, babe, I did not see your comment about a deep cut. So would you please drop it again in the comments? Um, because that is the best way for me to see it or send me a super chat. I will see that shit immediately. You know what I mean? If any of you need to get my attention right now, drop me a super chat. Why not? Why not? I will see your comment immediately and I won't leave you hanging. But Emoji King, you know how this deal works. You know how it works. Doesn't anybody believe in miracles anymore? Oh, baby. I believe in miracles. Absolutely. We are standing here today on the day of the great conjunction where Jupiter and, and Saturn come together. We are starting at the dawn of the new age of Aquarius, baby. That's a miracle. You're having a moment, Emoji King. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I have all the time in the world. Good, because sometimes when you're on the Real Juicy Detox in a live stream class, sometimes it takes quite a while. I don't know what I missed. I'm sorry, babe. I did not see your comment come through. Sorry, I should have said it was agar agaratine, a natural toxin found in mushrooms is destroyed by cooking. Don't know anything about that. I mean, I guess I could look it up, but I'm not gonna because I haven't heard Dr. Morris talk about a uh, natural toxin that we need to cook out of mushrooms. Not that he's the only person that has information on food, but honestly, he's my mentor right now and that is whose work I'm going to follow. Dr. Morris also says stay away from cruciferous vegetables, but I feel better when I eat broccoli. You have to listen to your body. Everyone is different. He does say that. My freaking headphones, why is the sound? I can hear it. Give me one second. He does say that, but he also says, he also says, this is why you need to really understand the context and the perspective, okay? The context and this perspective is such that he has also said the following. Let me find it for you. Power juices, that's where we were.
Juicing cabbage and, and the cruciferous vegetables is very beneficial for cancer cases. Straight out of Dr. Morse's book. Uh, and the book that I'm referring to is uh, the Detox Miracle Source book, in case any of you are here and you're tuning in and you're watching live for the first time. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up. If you guys are watching on on Facebook, can you come over to YouTube and check this out over here as well? It would greatly help me grow my channel. That would be awesome. I got nine watching on the YouTube, and I got probably 20 people watching on the Facebook. Come on over. If you're on the Facebook, come on over. It's okay. It's easy. YouTube.com. Actually, the link is in the description of this video for, for any of my, um, my, my playlists or my videos. Hit one of those and then come over to YouTube. But um, what was I saying? So in the Detox Miracle Source book, he has said, at the very bottom there, juice and cabbage and the cruciferous vegetables is very beneficial for cancer cases. So use your discretion, use your best discretion. Emoji King says, hi, rock star. He says that for rheumatoid arthritis. So, you know, put it in your body, see how your body responds, see how your body feels. One of the good, the great things about this whole thing that we are learning is that you got to have balance. You got to see what works best for your body. If you can't have mushrooms, don't have mushrooms. If you don't want to have any cooked food at all, forego the, 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 the roasted chestnuts. You know what I'm saying? Balance balance rockstar says hey emoji king <laughs> he worries about my brain and he doesn't see anything changing other than i've gained weight he didn't say the 30 pounds it's a lot he said i need to keep doing what i'm doing but i need to move off the sofa i'm depressed and i don't want to leave the sofa well i know babe your depression is stemming from a thyroid weakness. Thyroid, parathyroid. What are the herbal formulas that you're on? You know? What are you, what are you doing to support your body? How can I help you? What, what else do you need? Do you, hey, hire me as your one-on-one -on -one coach, but babe. I almost said bitch, but I didn't mean it. Babe, hire me as your one-on-one -on -one coach. If you need somebody to walk you through this hand by hand and have more accountability, I'm here for you. I am available for hire. Yes, I am. Emoji King, what are you asking, love? We don't see your question or I don't anyway. I don't know. There was a good lesson intended. Okay, I'll wait a little longer. Hey, 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 Moss. I'm glad that you're popping back in. I meant to say before I had two bites and instantly sick. Two bites of what? It was potatoes, chana, the tiniest bit of okra, and that's about it. I usually don't eat potatoes because they are more starchy. Um, I don't know what to say, man. The, the, I don't know. I don't know what else you're eating. What else have you eaten? In the last 24 hours, what, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. My body said, nah, no way. I ain't doing it. It feels exactly like when I used to drink Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite. I felt exactly like that. So you're taking on an acid hit. Listen, chana, which is garbanzo beans, which is chickpeas, for those of you who are watching and don't know. In Trinidad, we call that chana. Um, potatoes and chana. Those are kind of on the acid side of chemistry. The tiniest bit of okra, okra will not will not do that. But the chana is acid forming. Look, look at the look at the list. Check it out. All right. So if you're eating a diet high in garbanzo beans or chana, as we call it in Trinidad, that's acid forming food, my friend. And anytime you cook food, you generally push it into that acid side of chemistry. It becomes bonded chemistry. So you got to go into cook food really with a lot of discretion, right? Really minding how you're doing that. 
my best advice to you would be no cooked food for a little bit. Challenging, I understand, but doable. He worries about your brain and he doesn't see anything changing because he's not inside of your body. The brain, Kelly, you need to get, you need to just get back on your program, babe. Ah, we love you too, babe. We love you. Wanda in the house. I lost 110 pounds in 10 months on this lifestyle. Kelly, it definitely works. I promise. I know we've been telling her, we've been telling each other. Thank you so much, by the way. And if you guys didn't see Wanda's comment yesterday about how she was on death's door, was told basically your kidneys are shut down. They're in kidney failure. I think they gave you like six weeks to live or something crazy like that. And she went, oh, I'm going to clean this up right now. And she went on a full on raw and fruit protocol, healed herself within six weeks. And she is here now some 20 years later to live to tell the tale. How cool is that? Here's your comment. Emoji King, find a good fruitarian man or woman or one of each, right? I don't care. I just wanted to tell you how much, how my cut thumb healed before my eyes. I love, love, love you birds. I love, love, love you too. I'm so glad that your cut thumb healed right before your eyes. That's what you wanted to say. Awesome. Thank you. Of course you know how to detox. I cut my son with the watermelon. You cut your thumb with the watermelon knife. I can tell that you are audio recording your messages, Emoji King, or a non-binary, ex-binary person. Exactly. None. None what? I think he was talking about his thumb heel before his eyes from the cut, and he had, I think that's what emoji, I think that's what he was saying too. Potatoes and chickpeas together, not good. That's as bad as lamb. Yeah, it can be really acid forming. And your body told you. How cool is that? Your body straight up told you. I don't know. Either way, I'm done. The next bite of food is living. Yes, my friend, that's what it's about. You're not getting the point. I don't even know what a super chat is. I am one step ahead of you. Okay. I see my skin looks better, but he knows I can't drive anymore. It's more than just vain appearance. Oh, babe, I don't know what to tell you. Why can't you drive anymore? It, everything can be healed in the body with this protocol. You know that. You know this. No supplements anymore. What herbs are you taking? Herbs are not supplements. Uh, herbs are not supplements. Herbs do not put in your body the 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 enzymes or the steroids or the hormones that your body is supposed to produce. Herbs are plant life that support the healing of your tissues, organs, and glands so that your tissues, organs, and glands can produce their own chemicals, their own hormones, their own steroids, their own everything. All right, Kelly? Herbs are not supplements. Herbs are there to support the healing of your body. You can't do this on your own. You just can't. Hey, John. John is in the house. Thank you so much. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me go rinse this out because I do believe I'm finished with my mini chopper. And I, you know me with the extreme cleaning. Let me rinse this out. Let's rinse it out, baby. Let's rinse it out. And we got some other veggies to prepare.
Where is my leg? Oh, right here. Gonna put this back where it goes. So one up, thank you so much for that beautiful compliment, John. I appreciate you. You're so sweet. You're not taking any herbs. I meant herbs, sorry. Okay, well, you need to be. You need to be supporting your body through this, babe. All right, you need to get on the deep tissue cleansing kit right away. And you need to get on some thyroid support. You need to get your adrenals fired up and woken up. And for you, I would definitely recommend looking into the glandular, uh, not the glandular tinctures, herbal tinctures, but the actual glandular uh, pure adrenal, pure pituitary, I would probably uh, strongly recommend that you do. You need to kick up your uh, endocrine system in a very specific way. This thyroid issue that is causing the depression and the listless, list, listlessness and the, you know, staying on the couch and can't get your mo mojo back and you, you just, you're, bleh, bleh. you need to get your candida taken care of, get that yeast out of you. You need to get yourself dewormed. You need to deworm yourself from all that lamb that you're so in favor of eating and all of the lamb and all the, the meat that you've eaten all along the way. You need to get your, you need to get going. What, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, Kelly? You can afford to do these things. What are you waiting for? Come on, babe. You want me to slap you? I'll slap you right now. Get, get off your frigging ass and get your shit done. I love you. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm willing to stick my neck out on my live stream and give you a bitch slapping like you need one. Okay. It's just me and you here right now. Forget everybody else who's watching or who might be watching in the future. Get your shit together. Pull yourself out of this. Get on the phone with me. Book a month session with me, a month program with me. And let's go. Let's go. Let's friggin' go. Or not. It's up to you. I don't care. Either way. I do care. But either way, it's completely your choice. Completely your choice. 100% in your hands. You want success? Let's go. Let's go. Hire me as your detox specialist and let's go. You're ready to go? Are you ready to go though? If you're not ready, that's okay. It's all right. It's okay. But don't sit there thinking, oh, I can't do this. It doesn't work. And my home poem, woe is me. Come on, man. Time to pull your shit together. It's 2020. It's the end of 2020. It's time to move into 2021 strong, emotionally strong, mentally strong, physically strong. It's time to move into 2021 light. You are a light being. You have a, 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 a task at hand to get more in tune with your lightness, not just on the scale, but in your mental, emotional, spiritual bodies, as well as your physical body. And this is how you do it. If you can't do it on your own, I'm here. If you can't afford me, which is not Kelly's situation, but if you can't afford me, I'm dropping this for you live for free three times a day, my friends, three times a day, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with Bouncing with Merns, noon Eastern Standard Time, which is what we're doing right now in this live prep food with me, get elevated, figure out how to detox the body, how to detox the mind, how to detox the emotions, 
how to detox your spiritual being. I come live at 8 p.m. Kelly, where have you been? You've been noticeably away from class. Like, I love you, but come on, man. I'm putting, I'm put, I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm trying to give you guys. I'm trying to give you all. Who was just trying to call me? Like, really? I'm trying to give you all of the resources that I got for you. All of the resources. I'm pulling out all of the stops, man. I'm pulling out all of the stops. Stops. What's happening in January? I can't drive because I have the beginning stages of dementia because you need to detoxify your body. Kelly, you're too young to be having dementia. Fuck that shit. Come on. Come on. Come on, babe. I got you. I got you. You're almost all the way there. This is one of those cases where you need more than what I can give you for free in these classes. You need me to take you by the hand one on one every single day, if that's what it takes, Kelly. All right, you can turn this around. Come on, man. Come on now. Let me help you. Let me help you. Babe, don't see how anyone can gain weight on this diet, says Linda. I eat 80% raw, 20% lightly steamed veggies, started adding a lot more fruit and juicing every day, uh, rebound 20 minutes a day, yes, 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 and walk 45 minutes a day, five days a week, weight melts off, seems like I eat all the time, trying to gain weight, don't eat any meat, dairy, bread, rice, eggs, sugar, or soy. What she said. These are poisons in the body. I do eat soap nuts and seeds and drink dandelion and green tea, beautiful. Linda, you're on it, babe, you're on it. What's happening in January is that we are starting a, from January the 1st, a juicing, uh, a juicing in January program. 21 days, baby. That's it. 21 days. Anybody can do 21 days. Trust me. You can. You might think you can't. You might doubt it. You might be like, oh, hell no, girl. I need to eat food. I'm telling you, if you do this with our support, you can do it. You can do it. Linda says, do you wear any makeup? Do you wash your face with soap or use creams? Your skin is glowing. Oh, thank you so much. Not bad for 55, I got to tell you. Yes, 55. And I've never had any work done on my face. Can you believe it? I am blown away. And to see how my skin has improved since starting this journey on, on June 1st of this year. Hey, Siri, how many days has it been since June 1st? Hey Siri, how many days has it been since June 1st? It was 203 days ago. Thank you. 203 days ago, all right? 203 days. In 203 days, you can turn anything and everything around in your body, in your mind, in your soul. I don't wear any makeup. That's not true. I wear eyebrow. I, I use an eyebrow um, pencil. And sometimes I wear a light foundation. Let me show you what it is. So I will wear, on occasion, I will wear Bare Minerals. And I love this brand. I wear Pecan. Surprising to me always that has how dark my my foundation powder is, but I just sometimes use a little bit of this to keep down the the glare on my skin. And um, do I wash my face with soap or use creams? I um, sometimes I will put a little bit of coconut butter on my on my skin, and that's about it. I don't use anything else. This detox diet has got me clean and vibrant and glowing from the outside from the inside out right that is the big um that's the big secret um okay so i've got two 
four, six, uh, six, seven cloves of garlic. That is also gonna go into here, but I will use my garlic press to do that. I'll do that after. I'm still working on getting the veggies ready to go and chopped up. Uh, yeah, you can do this, Kelly. Don't give up. Oh, Kelly's not going to give up. Kelly's strong. Kelly's in this. Look at her putting herself out here and taking her licks, as we say in Trinidad. Look at her taking her licks. She's not going anywhere. She's not afraid of 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 looking at this and and you know. I'm not worried about her. I'm not worried about any of you. Everybody is here on their own spiritual path and spiritual journey. And Kelly, if it's not meant for you, that this is what it's going to take to heal your body and you want to do something else like eat lamb all day and think that you're going to help your brain. Listen, your brain is seeking fructose. Your brain Let's just talk about dementia for a minute. Thank you. Get on deep tissue cleansing kit, thyroid support, wake up the adrenals, look into glandular, pure adrenal, pituitary, kick up your endocrine system. Yes, Alana, listen, I know you were just retyping exactly what I said. You're brilliant. Oh my God, you're brilliant. But you guys, somebody said in one of the, um, I think it was you, Alana, that the more you watch of these classes, the more it sinks in and it gets like, you know, deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper all the time, the information going in until you can regurgitate it yourself and not regurgitate it and just not think about it. But you know this, like this makes total sense. But Kelly, listen, dementia, you need to be putting in as much high electrical vibrating food into your body as humanly possible. Because your brain, which are the most electric, energetic centers itself in your body, require the energy and dynamics that are found in fruit. All right, the energy and dynamic, energy and dynamic, cellular, beautiful energy, electricity that you need for your body is found and contained within the fruits and the foods that we put in our body. You continue to put zero energy lamb, zero angstroms of energy. You continue to put that in your body. What do you think you're gonna, where your brain is going to do? Where is your brain going to get energy from? That is like pulling your plug out of a socket. I apologize. Let me turn off my, uh, my sound. How about that? right? You put high electrical energetic food in your body so that your cells can absorb and transmute that energy into their cells. If you put dead, decaying flesh material, cooked food into your body, your brain is not going to get any electromagnetic energy from that. And you're going to suffer with dementia. Your body is already doing it. You got to clear up this lymphatic congestion in your head, the mucoid, the amyloid, excuse me, amyloid plaque. You got to do that with fruits, melons, and berries, baby. Enough shitting around. Enough fucking around. Get on it. Or not. It's up to you. I'm glad that you're all healed up, Emoji King. It was so weird. I plant, was planning on being mostly raw. Just my body said, nah, all the way for you, my friend. Yeah, your body is talking to you. Your body's like, nah, 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 nah. Enough with that. You can do a little bit of cooked food, but you know what, Moss? We are doing so many beautiful dishes, beautiful um, recipes. Let me get my knif, my knife. We're doing so many beautiful recipes here that you can actually still enjoy the flavor of all of the Trini food that you have know and love uh, just simply by uh, replicating the spices and the seasonings in it. Uh, we make a wicked um, raw vegan wrap. I, I have a little bit of a wrap series that we're going to do. And I don't mean, you know, wrap music. I mean, flexible wraps that you can make um for your sandwiches and for your, your wraps and so on. And 
I made one that tasted like Polori balls. Let me tell you what. I flipped out. I completely lost my mind. I was like, what? I cannot believe I just made a wrap to taste like Polori balls. But it was raw vegan, so you can still enjoy the flavors of home that you know and that you love and that you want to include. I'm going to just peel these onions that you see me doing right here, everybody. We're still working on the Bernsey burgers. We're hanging out. We're supporting each other on their juicy detox journey. We're supporting our, our sister Kelly in this moment as she gets her, you know, taking her licks, as we say in Trinidad, a buffing Kelly, a buffing her real good, right? That means, um, you know, admonishing her or disciplining her. I hate to, to use that word, but listen, every now and then we need our butts kicked, okay? We need to have our butt kicked every now and then. It's like, God, Burns, talk some, and Kelly even said that. She gave me permission, okay? So don't think that I'm, who? how, how dare I? Oh, that girl is so arrogant. Listen to how she's talking to one of her students in class. It's like, dude, she gave me permission. She said, please slap me, will ya? Wake me up. I'm trying to wake you up, baby. Uh, January 1st, we are starting the Juicy Detox, the 27th of December. We kickstart, I think it's on the 27th. Yes, it's on the 27th, where we are going to kickstart into either a 100% raw program or your choice, completely up to you, um, or either 100% raw or like 80% raw, having some stuff cooked. I'm going to make these so that they're big enough to fit in my in my juicer because I am going to actually be juicing these onions for our recipe and I'm not going to be using the juice I'm just going to be using the pulp from from the onions so so far I have about mm, that many onions and yes I have one more red onion you can use whatever kind of onions you like in this recipe Feel free to go ahead and adjust for what you have in your fridge, for what you have locally available to you, and for what you like. If you don't like onions, well, I think onions are kind of necessary in anything that you want to replicate, um, you know, the, the, the texture and the taste of meat. I would keep the onions in. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we are going to put everything through the juicer and that way everything is going to be nice and finely. I like my, my vegetables really, really, really finely chopped in this. You know, I've tried making this recipe um, and th this is one of the types of recipes. This is what you can expect in our uh, warm up to the new year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our December 27th to December 31st of eating. So if you're coming off of cooked food, you know, you might want to do something like this, 100% raw, also gives you a little heads up of what you can expect when you come off of the juice cleanse uh, at the end of our 21 days. Yeah, Moss, thank you so much. Kelly, I'm so sorry, says Moss. Yeah. You know what? We hold, we are holding space for Kelly <laughs> as we are trying to shake her awake. The ball is in your court. Yes, Carlene. Yes, girl. Uh, Linda, Linda says, those peanut butter cookies are amazing. I'm making another batch today using almond butter. Oh, my God, the peanut butter cookies, you guys. Again, with nuts, you want to be careful a little bit that you're not um, having too much of them because they are concentrated. But listen, they're so good. I'm, I have them from time to time. And again, I have to watch myself. How many of those do I want to eat? Um, four tops. But they're so rich and they're so decadent and they're so beautiful that uh, you, you're really not even tempted to overeat them. I don't know what it is. It's just that's how it goes with this stuff. That onion is no longer good. And I got all the stuff out of there. Okay, so what I want to do is... I want to get all of these in one bowl. So I'm going to just put them all in one bowl. I got to prepare my, my celery, and I have to prepare my uh, carrots to get put through the juicer. 
Um, and I've got my I've got my sweet peppers. Those are going to go in that bowl as well. And since I have the garlic here right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze the garlic cloves into here. So I healed, I cut my thumb and it healed immediately. No big deal, right? Oh, the joys of being clean. A, a, deta a, a emoji king. That is awesome, my friend. That is so cool. You're in bed. It's okay. I'm so thankful that you allow us to spend time with you. Oh my gosh, I'm so I'm so grateful that you're here spending time with me. Thank you, though, and you're welcome. You're welcome. I love having you guys here. Yeah, Ke Kelly, how can we help, babe? How can we help? How can we help? John says, do it, Kelly. Look at all the support and love for Kelly, girl. Asher, how are you doing, Asher? Asher has had a, a quite the intense healing experience yourself. How was your weekend, my darling Asher? Asher, you have to go all raw. There's no other way, no excuses. 55 in five days. Congratulations, John. Happy birthday. You're a Christmas baby. Oh, my God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear John. You are such an amazing, powerful, bright light in this world. Keep shining and doing everything that you are doing. Happy birthday to you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Happy birthday, my friend. So cool. On Facebook, he is doing some brilliant work. I met John at the through the um, Dr. Joe Dispenza stuff that we did together. Oh, my goodness. So amazing. So amazing that you are here, John. So love having you here. And thank you so much for supporting Kelly as she works through her, you know, her mortal experience, her experiences in this physical body. Um, you know, it's helpful to remind ourselves that we are not this physical body. This is just our vehicle, right? You got to take your vehicle into the body shop now and then, Kelly girl. Just take it on in. Take it on in. Emoji King, yes, it's amazing. But Kelly has the beginning of dementia. One of those is more important. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Emoji King, we love that you healed yourself, my friend. Dementia, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Come on now, Emoji King, what you talking about? Come on now. You know that's not our energy up in here. That is not our energy up in here. I don't think, I think, I don't think, um, I don't think weird is being immature whatsoever. I think you might want to kind of examine yourself right now, my friend. Careful. Kelly, if you don't want to juice anymore, you will. Will you? <laughs> Kelly, if you don't want to juice anymore, will you give me your juicer? Kelly has like the most banging juicer ever. Yeah, you're good, Moss. You're good. Um, my sister-in-law is so sick she can barely walk or sleep. She's had all these tests done, and the doctors still don't know what's wrong. She drinks a huge glass of Coca-Cola a day, eats meat, fried cheese. Some people don't want to hear it or give up the dead food. They put their trust in the doctors. Sad. Yep. That's right. But you know what? This is not for everybody. This is not for everybody. I'm telling you, it's okay if this is not for you or for them. I really don't know how many garlic cloves I've got going in here. I've got a lot. That's all I know. And I like it that way. You know what I do not have for my recipe today? Oh, thyme. I don't have fresh thyme. So instead of the fresh thyme that I usually use in here, I'm going to use a mystery herb. I'm not sure what it is. It could be Italian or it might be Provence, Provence herbs, herb de Provence, but it smells good, so we're going to use that instead. But every time I press garlic and I'm making anything 
anything at all, but definitely something that is Trinidadian. Let me tell you what, I always am like, oh my God, where's the time for some, you know, garlic pork? It's the seasoning that we need. No, I'm not afraid. I want to heal myself. I've lost my mom to Alzheimer's three years ago, and I see my uncles and aunts going through, the, through it now. That's what I'm scared of. It's an awful disease. But they are feeding that disease, Kelly. Your, your, your family is feeding a disease which they have all inherited poor lymphatic uh, uh, systems, right? You inherit a poor lymphatic system that manifests as weakened uh, uh, neurological functioning and you continue to do this, eat the same food that they're eating, you're going to get the same disease that they're going to get. Break the cycle. Break the cycle, babe. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Kelly, you can do this. You can break that cycle. 100% you can break the cycle. All right, so stop giving into, oh, yeah, well, my whole family has it, you know, um, but hey, let's eat all the delicious cooked meat that we can get fill our bellies with. Why do you think your entire family has it? Because they're all having the same lifestyle of food consumption. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Kelly, you are so right. It is an awful disease. We can, you can do this. We are here for you. Yes, thank you, Moss. And for everybody encouraging Kelly along the way. Kelly, you need to hit it hard with that family history. You can do it. Yes. Yes, uh, Kelly. I watch every day. I watched everybody die. No one listened. None of them. Yep. Linda says, making these burgers today, it's like once you've had this food, nothing else satisfies me. I know it's fun and creative too, right? Look at all that beautiful garlic. Ooh, these are going to be garlic -y. So I'm just, uh, by the way, one of the tips for making these Burnsy burgers is, or pastel, the, or meat filling, or neat loaf, any, whatever, however you choose to format it for your final product. Don't stir it. I layer all of my vegetables into the bowl, right? Like so. I've got a big amount of mushrooms. I don't know, six to eight cups maybe. I've got 500 grams of chopped up walnuts, um, uh, roasted, sorry, not walnuts, roasted chestnuts. I have got, um, I'm going to prep some carrots. I'm going to prep some carrots. Death smells. Yes, it does. I wish there was a raw callaloo. Well, we can totally make a raw callaloo, my friend. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. It does not have to be cooked. You can make it with the same ingredients, as a matter of fact. You, you absolutely can make a raw callaloo. Find any, there's a really great raw broccoli soup that Tanny Raw, T-A-N-N-Y-R-A-W, just posted. And I want to make something like that too, but you can totally use um, the dashing leaf, put it in the freezer so that it kind of melts down together. Take it out of the freezer. It, when you defrost it, it will kind of have a cooked kind of texture to it. Um, what am I looking for? Peeler. My peeler. Let's get these carrots peeled up. I'm just going to be using the um, the pulp from this. My original recipe had called for two carrots, but I'm going to use three. Oh, this is a big boy. And you really don't even have to peel them, honestly. What I am. What I am. <laughs> I 
I'm fine with it. I and I understand you. Shut up, Cindy, about her her juicer. Wishing is asinine. Take action. Stop wishing now. Well, I don't know. That's a bit harsh. Wishing is asinine. Listen, it's part of the part of the process. Well, part of the process. Part of the process. Carlene says, weird, isn't Kalaloo already raw? Well, in Trinidad, we cook our Kalaloo, so, but you can totally do Kalaloo. Kalaloo is like a spinach leaf. It's, we use dasheen. It's a type of um, ground root, actually. The, the leaves of the dasheen are, um, the leaves are called dasheen leaves or Kalaloo leaves, and it is a green, it's almost like a spinach, almost like a spinach. Um, spinach soup with okra and onions and oh my god I make a really good I make a really good cooked Kalaloo boy oh gosh it's so good so good um you know mm, yeah if you're gonna go 100% raw where's my knife there it is if you are going to go 100% raw, you can totally make a raw Kalaloo absolutely I don't like the look of this carrot I'm just saying it looks a little bit more pale, and I really don't want. Carrots that are going to be bitter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, that looks good. I'm not feeling this one. I'm not feeling it. Let's get another one going. I'm just getting another one going. There we go. Just to fit it into the bowl. Because all of that is going to go through the juicer. And the last thing that I need to prep for the juicer is my celery. Um, the celery I like to slice really, really thin so that there's no long strands of fiber in it. Oh, Alana was saying, Kelly, are you doing this? I want you on board, but most of all, I want you to do, I want you to want this. Yes, I'm drinking eight ounces of straight turmeric and ginger right now. Why go so extreme, babe? Why go so extreme? Slide into this gently. You don't need to do any big old straight up turmeric. Oh, God. What? Okay. Once you start raw, the power of healing your body and mind will go through. You make you will make you believe inflammation and pain will disappear. Yes. Yes. See so much encouragement for you here. I mentioned the other day that my right ankle is swelling. Started juicing today. The heal all tincture arrived. I also ordered the endocrine and adrenal tinctures that are still waiting on those. Yes, Anne-Marie. Get it, girl. Get it. And Cindy says, I love you. I love you, Kelly. I did my first detox on just water 10 days. That was back in 1976. Yes. Uh, Kelly says, same, Cindy. I'm sorry I took up so much of the class. I don't want a pity party. I just need to get back on track. Kelly, what, what you don't realize is that I am spending this much time on this in class because there are a lot of people that are in your same position that need a pep talk, that are quiet, silent members of the class and that are not going to um, say anything, but that they are sitting back and they're struggling. So anytime anybody asks me a question, I want you guys to know, I respond not just for and not only for the person who asked the question, or drops the comment, but for everybody else watching. Everybody else watching, all right? That's why I don't stand for any shenanigans from anybody, right? Emoji King, you can't be going around calling 
other classmates immature. That is just not cool. And that will get you banned. I really don't care who it is. Anybody starts talking that shit in my class, um, think again. Okay, so I've got some beets over here. Lovely, delicious, red, juicy beets. Just a small one, just a little one. That's going to add a beautiful red color to our um, to our to our faux meat, right? And I need to get some celery prepped. Let's get some celery ready. And that is six stalks of celery. So here are some tips for you guys. If you are uh, experiencing some of what Cindy is experiencing, let's talk about what are some tips besides coming to class and being open and upfront with what you're struggling with and knowing that you're gonna get some licks, right? Some spankings, you're gonna get some spankings from Mama Burns, yes you are. Um, but you know, um, bear in mind as well that I know Kelly very well. She's been in class since day one. She and I go way back to 64 days ago <laughs> and before that as well, beyond that. Um, but uh, here are some things that might be able to help you. Number one, be gentle with yourself. Please be gentle with yourself. Number one, be gentle with yourself. You're on a journey. You're on a process. It's not a, uh, you know, just snap out of it. Stop just wishing and start doing. And it's like, dude, that doesn't help anybody, right? That, no, that None of that helps anybody. This is not just a pity party either, all right? You're really struggling and you're trying to find a way to help yourself. And I'm pulling out all the stops, baby. I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm doing the gentle mama love. I'm doing the warrior get, let's go. It's time to go energy right? I'm giving you all the different versions of me because I want to really help you get over this little hump, Kelly and everybody else who is, um, who is struggling with this kind of thing. Let's see here. Let me go back up. Oh, Asher, I'm so sorry, sweetie. Well, you're in bed. You're watching the burns. Yay! All right. Take it as your body's healing. Um, Asher was is having some experiences. She's experiencing her own healing crisis. Oh, my God. The detox, y'all. The detox, what we experience when we have done this incredible damage to our bodies, the stuff that we experience as we are healing the body can be intense. I'm not going to lie. I get it. It can be very intense. So what I'm doing is I'm just chopping up my celery. Not super thin, but you get the idea. I just don't want, what I don't want to happen in my burgers is to have these long strands of celery fiber that you're chewing your burger and you're like, excuse me, is that a hair? It's like, ugh, we don't want that in there. So what I do to prevent that is I slice it, um, I slice it up like this. And then when I put that through the juicer and get it all pulverized, it doesn't have those long strings attached. I don't have my slidey under the board thingy, this, <laughs> my slidey under the board thingy thing down. So let me put that down. By the way, 
Thank you for coming to my kitchen. Thank you for spending time with me. I love it. Thank you for taking the time to learn about detoxing your body. Thank you for all the support for Kelly and for everybody else that is going through this. So what are the, some of the things that you can do to get back on track? Let's talk about that. What are some of the things that you can do to get back on track when you find yourself uh, falling, slipping, even though you know that this is not what I want to be doing, this is not how I want to be feeling. I know intellectually that how this whole detox thing works, but I'm having a really hard time uh, pulling it off. So number one, show up for class. This is where you get all the inspiration. This is where you get the camaraderie. This is where you can, uh, you know, have other people supporting you. You know, we've got your back. I mean, that is so evident with the with the comments and the encouragement that we've seen here for Kelly, is it not? It's very, very evident. So come to class. That's the first thing. Come to class, ask your questions, show up. Don't run away. Don't hide. Don't say, oh, I can't handle that because it's so much truth. Or, you know, if that does happen, then take a break. Take a break from class, okay? But know that this is where you can find your encouragement, that this is where you can find your support. This is where you can find the information to kind of remind you why you're on this path in the first place. You know, this is where you can come and go, oh, yeah, that thing that I'm so scared of, dementia, is actually healed when we eat. And by the way, I think it's time that I can start consuming my melon juice now. Mm. Um, this is where you come to remind yourself of why you're doing this, right? Fill your mind, fill your, your awareness, fill your energy field with information that is keeping you centered and focused on your goal. When I was learning all about Dr. Joe Dispenza and meditation and really active <laughs> quantum field level, level meditation. That's where I met John. That's where I met Vicki. That's where I met Amy um, through all of that work. When you, when I was doing that work and I was starting to learn about it, I frigging immersed myself in it. I consumed Dr. Joe Dispenza videos on YouTube. And then I signed up for his progressive and his advanced uh uh, workshops. I went to two of his advanced meditation workshops, week long retreats, because I wanted to completely immerse myself in it until it became second nature, right? So that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to come to class, you want to learn as much as you can. I have so much content here on YouTube. How much content do I actually have? Let me see. Let's go to my channel dashboard. I will tell you how many videos, live videos, I have uploaded in the last 63 days. Check this out. It's, it's absolutely crazy. So if you don't have, if you have extra time or if, you, if I'm not on and you are live and you want to come and see something of value, some content that is going to inspire you to keep going, you got to come and check out the YouTube channel. Like there's everything is here for you. Let's see here. 288 videos. What? 288 videos. Really? Live? That's crazy. That's absolutely bonkers. Going live three times a day, you guys. I'm always trying to give you guys as much of this content in as many different ways as humanly possible on my part because I want to inspire you to continue to do this work. I want you to not give up on yourself, you know. Uh, let me make sure I've got all of my stuff ready to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the – I'm going to juice these – in a minute, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the raisins prepped for this and the olives chopped. 
I have 144 live videos minus the two from the cottage that I did. Uh, I have 142 live videos on this topic of detox. So don't tell me that, you know, I don't know what to watch. It's like 144, pick something, pick anything, but pick something and get down to business if you so desire, right? Hold on a second. Well, that's not me. People want me to go to the neurologist and that's the most stu the stupidest thing to me. I saw what that neurologist does. I don't want to feed that disease. Yeah. You know that this is the solution, babe. You know. I want to chop up my raisins right now. Oh my God, watch the cats. They're going to come running. They think I have treats for them. So I have this many raisins, half a cup maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I love adding raisins to this recipe because um, it gives, you know how meat has that kind of sweet, a little bit caramelized flavor in it? Well, I find that adding chopped raisins, and it is a bit of a pain in the butt to get these chopped, but just got to take your time. It comes together. It comes together nicely. So just take your time and get, you know, just relax into the process. You got some stuff to chop up. So you're right, Kelly, all of that, you know, neurological stuff really does damage, damage the body. It's all about mindset. Yes, Moss, at the end of the day, you're killing yourself slowly with all the dairy, eggs, animals, and cooked food. Yep. Slowly killing yourself. Don't give up on yourself, guys. Do not give up on yourself. Do not, once you know this stuff, you can't unknow it, right? And quite often, quite frankly, that's what causes us depression because we know we're putting stuff in our body that we really should not be putting into our body. And it really causes a problem, it really causes a problem. And then when we wake up to what we've done, you know, we have to be gentle with ourselves through the whole process as well. Oh my God, guys, that garlic in that bowl is just rocking my world right now and then believe it or not the aroma from the from the from the raisins you know me I like to smell everything I like to smell everything as a little girl I was always teased by my family oh my god you smell everything don't you Burns every time food came to the table I would be like I'd pick up my plate I'd be like I'm like yeah why don't what's wrong with you people what's wrong with you you don't smell your food Come on. Come on. We've got to stop killing our, ourselves with all of this acid living. You have to be willing to give up the, the things that you are addicted to that are killing you. And if you can't, if you don't want to, that's fine. That's fine, but listen, babe, enjoy your suffering along with that. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm not saying that everybody doesn't have some, you know, slip ups here or there. It happens to all of us. It happens to everybody. So whether this is, you know, speaking to you, Kelly, or if you are following along and you are resonating with this, because you just struggle. And let's say you are also aware that, hey, man, you might not be struggling now, but you know, that might be your experience down the road somewhere too. You're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, yes, Burns, I'm going to need this. I might, might not need it now, but I might need it at some point. So what are some other things that you can do? Well, the first, the other thing that you can do after you immerse yourself in the work is you can be gentle with yourself. That's number one, actually. 
Be gentle with yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Say, okay, I fell off the wagon. Let me just get back on. No more beating myself up. Kelly, can you please go watch again the Matt Kahn releasing judgment? Okay, you got a lot of judgment going on in your vibrational field. I see it. I can, I can see it. I can feel it. You know, got to give up that judgment. If it could have happened any other way, it would have. What is this here to strengthen within you? First of all, nothing is stupid, right? So I've got my raisins chopped up. I think these are chopped up enough. I think so. I hate chopping these raisins, though. They are too sticky to chop in the little mini food processor. They really don't do anything in the... Um, in the blender except make it go into a paste and that is not what you want. You need this to be, you know, like that where you can see all the little bits like that, you see? Just like so. Okay. Okay, so that is that. And so let's scoop that right on top of the other ingredients that we have going on here. Yes, we will, just like so. Oh my God, my floor, my floor is so dirty right now. But you see, you want them all separate like that. You don't want them. I actually tried doing this in the um, in the Vitamix, and <laughs> this is what I ended up creating, like a raisin paste, which I need to. Um, it tastes delicious, by the way. Mm -hmm. But not going to work in this kind of format. Um, let's see. What else do I need? The olives. Okay, let's get those. Olives, where are you? Oh, right. Do we not have any more olives? <laughs> okay, we don't. But let me see if I have any capers. Yes, I do. I have capers. Okay. <clears throat> so raisins and capers are traditionally included in a pastel as a topping. At least they were in my in my house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up some capers and sprinkle them into the meat mixture as well. I'm just going to drain this out. The other thing that you can do to help further yourself along on this journey of going raw is just do it one day at a time. One day at a time. Slowly start to incorporate some raw food into your, into your diet. Don't go, go all hog wild crazy jumping off the deep end and eat, drink, you know, a gigantic glass of turmeric and ginger. Make this fun. Fruits, melons, and berries are your friends. That is where the most electromagnetic, electromagnetically charged food is going to give you the most electrically charged 
brain cells that you're looking for, okay? Why do you think the saying is an apple a day keeps a doctor away? A raw food, no wonder, right? Right, Moss? Moss, you are brilliant, my friend. Did you say you're 21? Crazy. I don't see you as 21 at all. You are an old soul. Yes, you are. Just going to give these a rough chop. Um, capers are little flowers. And they are kind of in this kind of pickled. Pickled but not fermented, you know what I'm saying? They're not fermented. Somebody was asking the other day about kimchi or uh, making their own pickled sauerkraut. And funny enough, in the grocery store last night, Dolly was like, what about, because I said, oh, flat cabbage. Let's get a flat cabbage. We can make some nice coleslaw. And he's like, yeah, what about, um, what about making, um, what is that thing, pickled cabbage? Sauerkraut, thank you. What about making sauerkraut? And I'm like, ah, it's fermented. We, we, we want to kind of cut down on foods that are fermented going into our belly because they're going to cause more fermentation, more gas. So that's a nice chop that I got going on on there. And this is just going to add a little bit of dimension and real Trini pastel kind of feel to the burger. So I'm just going to, let's just do this. Let's just sprinkle this in on the top. So what else can you do to stay inspired and motivated on this journey? Well, you know, surround yourself with beautiful food, Kelly. You know where it's at. You know how to do this. I know the focaccia that you made looked amazing. That focaccia art was like fire, babe. But, you know, making bread and having bread accessible in the house, I'll tell you what that does to me. That makes me want to eat bread. Surround yourself and your, your, your whole environment with living beautiful raw food that is not falling into those comfort food zones. You know what I'm saying? Like this pastel recipe. Instead of doing it in a cooked corn meal dough, you can just enjoy the burger with a little, you know, mustard pickles that you can make yourself. Yes, my friends. Yes. Uh, that is where it's at. Now, I think I'm going to, no, I'm, I'm not going to put in the green onions. We're going to leave those over there. But what we are going to do now, how are you guys doing? Are you hanging in there with me? Are you still cooking with me? I didn't stay away from class just to stay away. My oldest daughter came out for the weekend with my granddaughter. Okay, babe, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make you feel defensive. I just have been missing your presence. You know what I'm saying? Your dry wit and your humor and your lovely personality and your amazing support of everybody else. I miss you. I miss you guys. I know when when my regulars aren't in class and I miss, I miss having you here. But sometimes, you know, sometimes we can really stay away a lot when, uh, when we're off our game, you know what I mean? If you were really on your game and it was a real priority, even if your daughter's over, you'd be having Bernsey on the TV. Why would you change what's on the TV just because your daughter's here? Hey, daughter of mine check this chick out oh my god I love her you know what I'm saying you're like Kelly you usually have me on the big screen on your jumbotron <laughs> I love that I love that I love you Kelly hi Dottie You know who else loves you, eh, Kelly? Dottie McDottie. Dottie McDottie. Say hi, Kelly. Kelly. Hey, Kelly, we love you, Kelly. We love you. Yeah. 
oh, okay. <laughs> Her tummy just totally rumbled. I'm like, okay, you can go down. Oh my God, I love you, Kelly girl. I love you, Kelly girl. One of my best friends' name is Kelly, too. Love, 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 love. Okay, let's bring the juicer over because believe it or not, I kind of want to put the rest of these capers in there, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve my excitement. I freaking love capers. Capers and raisins together. Mm. That is something that is so good. So good. <laughs> Nothing asinine. Not everyone is at the same level of enlightenment. Absolutely. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with wishing. Wishing isn't asinine. Wishing is part of your process. You go from wishing and hope. You know, it's part, it's part of the spiritual journey along the way you go from wishing and hoping to knowing trusting believing but even believing knowing is higher than believing on the emotional scale and everybody's at their own place wherever they are you know what i mean um it's important not to judge ourselves it's important not to judge other things other people well, that is a trigger word for me as well. My dad used to use that word when he was being a little asinine himself. You know what I mean? Okay. Love you, dad. But, you know, when you were here in your physical form, your ego was like, oi, sometimes. Okay, let me just wipe down my counter here. Oh, I got one more thing to chop, you guys. Let me show you. This is a really important ingredient in, hold on, in this process. And it is these sun-dried tomatoes. This adds a real richness and a robustness, a, a real deep savoriness to the dish. And so I'm going to chop some of those up. I told you it was a lot of things to chop, but not really. It's all good, right? Hi, kitty. This is not your treats, babe. This is... <laughs> she thinks I pulled out cat treats. Cat treats. So you know what that means. I'm going to have to give her some. You want some treats? Dot, do you want some cat treats? Hi. Hi, girls. Hang on. I got to give the kitty some... Some treats. Hi. Here we go. Right there, Dot. Yeah, Dot's tummy wasn't feeling good. Your tummy isn't really feeling so good, is it, Dot? Yeah. That's it. That's it. You got lucky. You got lucky. That's it. All done. No more treats. Go back. Go back and sleep. That's it. That's all I got. Did you enjoy them? Great. Okay. Raisin paste equals dessert. Yes, it does. So yes, callaloo bush is in the spinach family. They're a bit intense. 
it's always all or nothing. Yeah, I'm like that too, Kelly. I'm like that too. It's either do nothing or do everything immediately. You know what I'm saying? That's hilarious coming from me. <laughs> it's all good. I'm not quiet, but Burns, can you, can you, can tell you the hell I live every day? Yeah, I know. Cindy, Cindy, you are a warrior girl. I don't know how you do it every day. Honestly, you are dealing with your own level of hell. It's true. It is very true. But there are a lot of other truths. And that's what the other stuff is the stuff that we're going to focus on, isn't it? The truth, like, we get to hang out every day. Yay! Right? Right, Asher? Oh, Asher might be in bed sleeping by now. It is the middle of the night over there in Australia. Right? There are so many people who are suffering so much with so many things. Oh, my God. I just feel for everybody. I really do. Now, sometimes I will soak these um, tomatoes. These are sun-dried tomatoes. They're in the envelope. They're not packed in oil, which is really, really important. All right? I don't want to put any of that excess oil in here because I don't want this to be, I want it to be really dry, and I don't want it to be oily. So I like using these ones. These are my favorite in terms of flavor. Use whatever you have accessible to you. If you don't have sun-dried tomatoes, you can put some tomatoes in the dehydrator, dry them out a little bit so that they... Um, don't have their their moisture content in there because if you were to just put tomatoes in it's going to make this too wet so we're always looking for that dry texture that when you squeeze the mixture together in your hand that you can see it sticks together hey ash such good advice burns fill your life with stuff that inspires you yes okay good i'm glad that that, that, that I love it when you guys give me validation and feedback about what is resonating with you about what I'm saying, right? It's uh, it's helpful for me. It's like, okay, all right, all right, all right. That's good. That's good validation that, okay, that was the right message for somebody out here. So I'm just uh, cutting these up as best I can, you know, as best I can. Between this and the raisins, oh, my God. How are you guys doing? Are you cooking along with me, by the way? Are you enjoying this unfolding? Are you enjoying cooking alongside with me? I know some of you come back to the videos and um, get all your ingredients ready, and then you'll come back like the next day or a few days later, and you'll watch the this, and you'll, you know, You'll watch and you'll prep along with me. Do any of you do that? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. So that looks pretty good. See, that's about what you're, what you're looking for. All right, weird. Awesome. Weird, by the way, when you hear me say moss, it's weird. That is a... Uh, that is Moss's uh, alias here on the tube. Um, Cindy says, Kelly, try having juice and fruit throughout the day and a big salad for supper. This keeps it simple and easy to prepare when your mentality, you're, when you're mentally tired and depressed, keep it simple and you'll lose the pounds. Yes, thank you. Yes, indeed, keep it simple, keep it light, um, you know, stay on, having as much beautiful juice as you can Kelly you know the way babe you know the way recognize that when you do eat off of your plan your alkaline plan recognize what that is okay that is just a lot of comfort eating and that's okay babe it's Christmas it's a hard time of year for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons especially when you've lost a child especially when you feel a lot of sadness and guilt around the loss of your child. My God, as if mother guilt isn't bad enough. 
be gentle with yourself, honey. In no way does my um, intensity with you here not take that into account and into consideration because my God, what you have been through, babe. And heal at the same time. Yes. Oops, I lost my food camera. Back, back, yes, no, maybe so. Burns, you're solid. Oh, thank you, Denny. Hey, how you been, Denny? My goodness, last few days I was on the Mediterranean coast eating seafood, drinking wine. It's easy to indulge in the common. Now looking forward to getting back to raw. Well, first of all, congratulations for being on the Mediterranean coast. Oh, my God. Where were you? Where? 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 I want to know. We need to know the details. Congratulations for having a beautiful vacation out there. I am so jealous. I'm so envious. I never did put my thing. Oh, I moved it. Okay. Yes, I loved my um, my week in uh, my my two weeks actually in Spain, and then part of that two weeks I was on um, I was in Ibiza, Ibiza as they say, and um, I just sat and stared out at the Mediterranean Sea right on the boardwalk. My resort was right there, and oh my God, all I did I just sat and just stared. I was like, this is incredible. What a life. Maybe if you buy the seasoning as you chop the raisins, it won't stick together as much for next time. Yeah, maybe that might work. I, every time I've tried it in the food processor, sometimes I'll try to do it with, um, you know, the seeds and nuts. By the way, this is going into the recipe as well, these um, pumpkin seeds that's going in. I'm going to be showing you how I pulverize this to make a, a meal, a, a pulverized um, uh, sunflower seed meal, I mean pumpkin seed meal in the juicer as well. So why don't we do that? Why don't we bring over, let me make sure there's nothing, ooh, Sardana, Albania, border of Greece. Wow, that sounds amazing. Kelly says, I don't eat anything from a can or use any aluminum. Yeah, I know, Kels. Hold on, let me just see something here. Uh, and then Cindy said, yes, Kelly, no cooking, just juice and fruit. Hold on. I have to someone in the kitchen. I have to have someone in the kitchen with me when I cook because I can't stay on track. I forget I added or didn't add to a recipe. It's easier for me to just juice. I ask so much from my daughter. Well, you're not asking so much from your daughter. If you're asking your daughter to help you with juicing, that's not asking so much. You gave birth to her, okay? You raised her. It's the least she can do for you. Give up this notion that you cannot receive help. Okay, you can receive help. It's okay. And then Cindy said, yes, Kelly, no cooking, just juice and fruit. Keep it simple for yourself. And, oh, I forgot the lemon juice. It's not just straight turmeric and ginger. Okay, well, that is, that is good. That was a bad idea, but it was nice, so nice to spend that time with my daughter. And she really, she did say, eat those raw crackers, mom. Yeah, I know the, ba the bread baking with the family is awesome, but... It is a bad idea because then it's like, pfft, I'm going to eat that focaccia, especially that it's a work of art. I need to taste it, right? Because my granddaughter had the TV. She is something else. Well, that's okay. I understand. But you can have me on your phone when you're in the kitchen making focaccia with the daughter, with your daughter. You know what I'm saying? By the way, if you buy canned food, never leave it in the cans. It's super bad to do that. Yes, it is. We prefer not to use canned food. I make some concessions sometimes, uh, occasionally, you know, like, but even that I have other alternatives now, instead of buying canned coconut milk cream, you can get it in those Tetra packs. Okay. Let's get the juicer over here and let's get the rest of these veggies. Oh my God. It's like almost four hours that we've been working on this. All good. Um, Let's get that juicer over here. 
now that I'm thinking about it burns, December 21st really said spiritual awakening. My stove went out today. We need to get new burners. It was really meant to be. There you go. It's a sign from the universe. You don't need those burners. Kelly said, I'm enjoying watching you. Aw, I love you, babe. I'll post my crackers I made the other day. I should freeze them. They have lots of seeds. Well, if you, if they're really dry crackers, then you don't need to freeze them. You don't. They'll last. Hmm. Business. Now we're in business. So I have my awesome Omega 800 juicer over here. And I'm just going to plug her in. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to juice these uh, veggies and use just the pulp. So let's get this going, shall we? Let's get this show on the road. I tried to get excited for Christmas. I'll be glad when this month passes. Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Oh, I do buy coconut milk. So coconut milk, actually, you can get it in the cans, a little bit in the cans. Listen, you can't be so stringent, right? You gotta have balance, flexibility. Know when to, know where to, you know, um, uh, be really strict and know when to have some flexibility. You don't eat a lot of coconut milk in general. So, you know. But, and they do sell them now in those Tetra packs, the soft packed, um, soft sided boxes. So you can get it like that. So what, what we're gonna do now, by the way, this is my Omega 800 juicer, welcome. Welcome to the show, Omega 800 juicer. I feel like I'm Vanna White, Vanna, Vanna White on the price is right, the juice is right. So I love this juicer because it's so easy to take apart and clean, but also, there are two kinds of blades that um, filters that this comes with. So you see that one with the holes that will squeeze the juice out and leave a drier pulp. And I like that it has another attachment. It also had, comes with this attachment that does not have any holes. You see that it does not have any holes at the top there with the filter and it um, just pulverizes the food. So actually what I do like to do is I like to keep the liquid in the beet. I like to keep the liquid in the beet. No, not that kind of beet in the beets. These guys, these guys. So I'm going to put those through first and this way I'm not going to um, remove any of the juice from the beets. So let's do that. Get my plunger. Let's go. And we'll just put a little bit of carrot in to get all of that beet flowing through. And you can see a little bit of the liquid does come out because that was just very juicy. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that blade over. Now, if you don't have a juicer that will do this, or if you don't have a juicer at all, get one because it's important for this lifestyle. But if you don't have one right now, you can just uh, finely shred or grate the vegetables that I'm doing now. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm going to put this one back in here and then just squeeze out the juice as necessary. I keep the juice from the beets themselves because I want that extra flavor and extra color. So this little bit of juice that came out, that's going to go right back into our into our burger. So let's start with the celery because I will drink the celery juice after it's been put through. So yeah, don't worry if you buy if you buy the canned coconut milk, that's fine. But if you can find the boxes, you did get a few boxes of coconut the other day. Okay, perfect. You can make your own coconut milk. It's so easy. Coconut flakes and water. That's it. Yes, we've also made, I've also made here the um, coconut milk using the coconut meat and coconut water from the Yang Thai coconuts. I love that as well. Uh, Kelly, I love it. I love it. Kelly says, now that I'm eating these crackers, I don't know why I ate those damn cookies. I know, girl, you just had a moment. No big deal. No judgment, right? No judgment. You had a moment of clarity is what you had. And it's all good. Okay? So don't stress out about it, man. You're back. You're in class. You got. We have your back. You know? But yeah, those those cookies are gonna kick your butt every time. Now you gotta detox the cookies and you will. Get on the herbal formulas, babe. You need to get that candida out of you, parasite M. You need to deworm yourself, parasite G. Get on the fruits, baby. Get back on the fruits. Get yourself detox. You will feel better emotionally as well as physically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yes. Yes, man. How you mean? How you mean? Okay, so that's the celery. I'll just grab the celery juice over here, put that to the side. Now we're going to go for the peppers. Let's go for the peppers, shall we? Uh, I wonder if I should also slice this up so that I don't get big pepper fiber. Let me see. I know that the carrots are totally fine to go through just as is because it tears it up. Let's see the peppers look like yeah, the peppers can go through as well just like that it wasn't a moment it was a total breakdown or it could have been the beginning of a breakthrough is what it was be careful of the words that we use to speak to ourselves with all right be careful of that it wasn't a breakdown. It was a total breakthrough. Hey. How are you? Yeah. You got stuff? Mm -hmm. What'd you get? This is Kaya, everybody. Say hello to my beautiful... Amazing 18 year old Kaya. What did you get? Who did you get them from? Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me show let's, our, here's our view over here. Kaya has gone, she went to the um, crystal shop. I went to a um, let me just move stone bridge in Kitchener. Okay, let me just move this. Was that the one on Victoria? Yeah. Oh, I used to walk by there all the time. Okay, wait. Let me move this out of the way. Thank you. Oh. No, I just fed them. Okay, so Kaya is here, and she would like to show us her 
her crystals that she got. So this is Azurite. You can hold it right up to that. Oh, true. So Azurite. Here, so speak pretty. into this. It's Azurite it's for like anxiety and a bunch of other stuff. Azurite is good for what? <laughs> anxiety and a bunch of other stuff. Anxiety. Okay, that's good to know. Get good to know. More as well, like Oh, oh, and then this one. Be careful, don't drop it. Ooh. No, freaking never. Ooh, okay, hold it up. Let's show, show everybody. Show everybody. That is beautiful. Look mm -hmm. at that quartz. Look at this in the middle. There's like something just there. Oh, wow. And it like feel like there's just indentations that are just like super cool. I was like, oh, I need that very much. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, your dirty hands, Mom. That's okay. It wipes me. Um, I was thinking of like <clears throat> with all my like when I get other crystals and stuff like that, I would um case it in like um silver wiring and like case with the other ones because quartz um amplifies the effects of other crystals. Mm. So you should sage them as well. Do a little cleansing ceremony for them because mm -hmm. they also absorb anybody's energy mm -hmm. that has touched them. Mm -hmm. So you would want to clear them up, clear the stones of that energy. Oh, it's beautiful where it just glistened right there. So just in the middle of it, like something. Mm -hmm. like, oh, really cool. so beautiful. Like, give me that. Just I got two. I got two. Awesome. Well, like a destiny stone. So I got. I don't. I totally forgot what she told me. About. Hold it right up though. Hey Back it up a little bit so it's in uh, focus. I don't remember go. what this is actually. Boss token. Little thing. These are free. There's like take one. Like, okay. Awesome. Got Thank you for sharing. Well, you got some <laughs> carrot juice on that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. So that was Kaya sharing her beautiful crystals that she just picked up. Uh, I couldn't find Moldavite anywhere. And you couldn't find Moldavite. Mm. The place that it's at is um, closed until it's closed right now. So, okay. All right. So I'm going to start adding, actually. I'm going to start adding these pulverized vegetables. This veg... Oops. Drop my papitas. I'm going to just add in what I've got here so far of these... Um, this vegetable pulp right into here. And just spread it around. Remember, I don't want to do any heavy duty mixing in here for a little while. I just want to just add all of these components into the bowl. Keep spilling it. I keep spilling it. You think I should seal it? Maybe that would help, Burns. Yeah, maybe. Oh my goodness! I'm making a big, I'm making a big mess over here. It's all good. It is all good. It is all good. Okay. Yes, Kelly. Thank you. I'll let her know that you said that. Congratulations. They are lovely. I don't know much about crystals, but those are pretty. Mm -hmm. Parasite M and Parasite G, you need both. <laughs> yeah, you need to get on a full protocol, babe. You need to get on a full herbal protocol. Okay. Let's get going. Let's put in the rest of our veggies. We've got some yellow pepper. How are you guys doing out there? Are you still with me? Are you still cooking with me? Oh God, I hope so. 
uncooking. I'm not using heat to cook any of this. So aside from the chestnuts, the roasted chestnuts that we've got in here, it is all raw. You put this in the dehydrator, you don't cook it above 120 degrees, you keep it raw, and bam, you got raw burgers. There's no, there's no need to go and eat meat. Everything you need is right here. Both Parasite M and Parasite G. Kelly, you need both of those. Okay, let's go. Now, with the juice that you're getting out of these vegetables, you can totally make a beautiful um, soup. Yes! Yeah, that's still good. You can make a beautiful dressing. Throw some tahini in there. Oh my God. Blend that up in the blender with some, you know. Some garlic and some onion and some, oh my God, you can make anything. This red pepper juice is so delicious. Okay, we're gonna go in now with some onion and the onion juice, I'm going to just add a little bit of this onion juice. And then I'm gonna use this juice to make another tahini dressing. Or you can make a sesame seed paste dressing or Sunflower. I'm just wanting to make sure that this onion is not going to be too... Sometimes I don't like how onion skin comes out in the burgers. Like it gets kind of hard to chew. Yeah. Okay, first of all, let me let me put this carrot juice over here with this vegetable juice. And you can totally throw that in the freezer. You can even just drink it just like this. You can make like a gazpacho. Mmm, that smells really good. You can make a really nice gazpacho um, juice. Totally. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. Let me just have a look at this. See, this is what I'm not going to like. This, this kind of thing is not going to be good in my, in my burger. I know that for a fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop these guys up. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it through the juicer, and then I'm going to pull out that pulp and I'm going to chop it up. Give it a little chopperoo. Oh, Kaya, I found a really good spiritual guide for us. Mm -hmm. Lori Ladd, L-A-D-D. -D. If you look on the YouTube channel right now and check the history, she's really, really, really good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to chop that up. So let's put the rest of this onion through. Rockstar is still here. Awesome. Melvina, I just came on here. What are you making? Hey, welcome to class, babe. I am making um, Bernsey burgers. They're raw vegan burgers. And with that, it's, we're, we're making it taste like Trinidadian pastels, which is like a tamale. But I've had tamale, and tamale are, in my humble opinion, just a shadow 
of a hint of what a pastel is in my mind. But it's that same kind of concept. So that's what we are making here. Thank you so much for popping in. Oh my God, I'm so glad that you are here. So, so glad that you are here. And we're talking about detoxy stuff. We're talking about detox, how to, how to stay on your detox, basically. How to stay inspired so you continue to clean out your body. And here at The Real Juicy Detox, that's what we talk about. We talk about healing the body using fruits, melons, and berries and raw living food to rejuvenate our bodies and regenerate our bodies. Huh? It is. It's the day of the Great Conjunction. That's why I said you should go watch some Lori Ladd. Oh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just feeling that I'm able to lash onto it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to slide this over. I'm still going to um, pulverize the, um, the sunflower seeds. Thank you so much for letting me know that you are still here, Rockstar. So glad that you guys are sticking with me here. I just came on here, what are you making? So yes, we're making these beautiful pastels. We're hanging out. We're liming, as we say in Trinidad. I'm from Trinidad originally, so FYI. Munching on some pumpkin seeds. We're making these burgers that I created which are raw vegan. They don't have any beans. They don't have any textured vegetable protein, none of that. They're truly raw, truly vegan, except for the, um, except for the chestnuts that I use in here. But if you don't want to use chestnuts, which are alkaline, by the way, we really focus here on alkaline living, alkaline eating to help our bodies stay nice and clean and detoxed because we, we understand how the chemistry that we put into our body affects our bodies. And when you start understanding that it's the chemistry that you put into your body that determines and affects the health or the illness that we feel in the body, then you start kind of going, oh, damn. Okay, I can do this. So this is one of the recipes that I came up with after I did my 40 days of straight up juicing, 100% juicing. Then I did 100 days of raw vegan eating in addition to my main focus stayed juicing. I'm just chopping this up to make sure that some of those bigger pieces, next time I will probably slice up the onion because I don't like those big flat pieces of, you know, the, the, the layers of the onion. I don't like how when it dehydrates, I can chew that. I can feel it. It's too hard on the chew, you know? So I'm just going to chop that up. And I might actually put that right through again. <laughs> awesome, Elena. Elena is back in the house. I might actually put that through again. The juicer to see see like this big kind of piece this is what I'm trying to avoid that is going to make for a hard bite when it comes to chewing uh, the burger when we're done so actually I am going to process this one more time to get it even finer and I think I'm going to start alternating the 
pumpkin seeds because that might help bring a little bit of that texture to it, you know? Except the pumpkin seed needs to have the other homogenizer blade on there. So let me just do this. I hope you guys are enjoying this madness that's going on in here right now. Homogenizer blade, where are you? So it's right here, so I'm just gonna slide this back on, just like so. Do any of you have any more detox-related questions for me or just life-related questions? Fire away, I am an open book. Let me know. What's that one thing that you've been wanting to know about the burns? And you're like, I wonder if she, fill in the blank. Ask me a question. Ask me a question, any question. Louise, Louise Flanagan is in the house. Welcome Louise, all the way from Limerick, Ireland. Yes, she is our beautiful, beautiful Irish Belle. How are you, my darling? I can't believe I made it. Still 95% juicing fruit and chewing 5%. I've been pretty maxed this past week, so limited free time. Love, love, love you and the extended fam. Girl, you're rocking it. Woohoo! You guys, I'm excited. I'm getting excited. I'm also crying from the onions. I'm getting excited because we are almost at the seasoning stage of these burgers and you know this is a more time consuming recipe but it is freaking worth it i'm telling you if you've made bernsey burgers and you're in class right now can you drop a comment hi yes yo hey who hey 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 great to see you burns so great to see you as well love you to death kelly love you to life <laughs> Okay, let's do some of this. Let's do something. So what we're gonna do is we're putting in the seeds and the, the onion, kind of alternating it. I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not, but we're going for it. I'm putting the onions back through the juicer for a second run because I really want it pulverized finer. And I'm alternating it with some of these pumpkin seeds or not. Let's see, what do we got going on here? Trial and error. I'm always experimenting. Usually I don't put my onion through the um, through the juicer at all. Usually I do that, I chop it finely in the food processor. And the meal that is coming out now is usually a lot drier because it didn't have the usual moisture from the onion, but that's okay because it'll all get mixed in and mixed around in the bowl as soon as I'm ready to go there. So I've got I have got, what is this? 300 grams of pumpkin seeds. See how it's coming out drier now? As opposed to before when it had the moisture from the onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me wash my hands and then I want to see what Louise is saying. Louise was saying, I'm rocking it in between meltdowns and glorious joyous moments. It's a constant juggle, right? Yes, indeed. Happy solstice to you too, my lovely. 
Yes, indeed. Okay, so I think that's it for the juicer. I could also put... Hi, kitty. You want more food? I was going to say I can also put some um, sunflower seeds in here as well. But I think we've got enough. I think we've got enough. What's up, kitty? Ah, you need more food. Where is my little scrubber? Alrighty, I am going to clean out this juicer one time so that I don't have to touch it again. Because there is something to be said for walking away from the kitchen when you're done the cooking part and not having to deal with a mess, you know what I'm saying? Because by the time this one is over, I'm going to be like pooped. How long have we been on? We've been on for four hours and 11 minutes already today, which I love because People are having their breakthroughs, right, Kelly? Yes, you are. Washing up. Washing up, man. That is, you know, that's a thing. That is a thing right now. Let me let me go over to here, wash these pieces out. Okay, so I noticed when I was just cleaning, taking this part off, you see how stiff this button is to move? That means that there's a lot of sticky juice down in there because um, that's how it goes if you don't rinse it out. So the good thing about this juicer is that it is a completely sealed juicer. And by the way, this is the Omega 800 that is in my Amazon store, which is linked in the description of this video. If any of you are interested in finding a really, really, really good juicer. So what I do, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to just take it over to the sink. Oops. I'm going to just take it over to the sink and I'm going to just run. Look at how hard this is to move. Okay, this is 
halfway between open and close, and I just can't budget at all now. I can't budget at all. I don't mean I can't budget. I also do have a terrible time at budgeting. I mean, I can't budge the knob. So I'm just running some hot water down behind that knob, that turn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. And you can totally rinse the entire thing down. It's all enclosed, so you can do that with confidence that so you're not gonna wreck your juicer. And now check this out. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Whereas before I couldn't move it at all. You remember? Yeah, you do. You just saw me do it. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to wipe her down, put her back together, rinse everything off so that it's ready to go. I don't have a big messy thing to deal with later. And usually I don't even wash out the, um, the juice part of the receptacle because I never, ever, hardly ever juice onions in there. It's always usually just fruit. So um, very, very easy to clean. Usually just rinse it out with some water. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I had bioidentical hormone pellets injected and a B12 injected in my hips last week or the week before. I'm not sure which, but I have shooting pains in each hip that's never happened before. <sighs> Why? Why, Kelly? Why would you do that? But now you know. All right. Now you have shooting pain in your hips where you got an injection, a bioidentical hormone injection. When you give yourself, oops, hold on, my nose, my nose is running. Kelly, okay, just because you know this already, right? But you know that when you give yourself a substance which the body is supposed to produce on its own, you prevent your body from producing that thing, okay? So you're just setting yourself back. And now you are dealing with some shooting pain in your hips that you didn't have before yeah oh my god babe i'm sorry i lost total control of finances i can't do simple math i mean basic simple math oh my god i need to gain control of these things again who can't count basic dollars well you need brain food babe you need brain food fruits melons and berries baby that's all i gotta say Okay, so we are done with that. I understand. I understand. I was on bioidentical hormones too. And I took myself off of them because I was like, you know what? I think my body can do this. I think I can, I can stop taking these hormones now. You need to get on the pituitary formula. You need to get on the female reproductive formula. You need to get on the thyroid formula. You need to get on the you need to get on the herbal protocol. Stop struggling. Give up the struggle. Give your body 
the tools that are at your disposal to help you heal these tissues, organs, and glands, please. Give up the struggle. Hey, kitty. All right, how are we doing? Thank you guys so much for sticking around while I cleaned up this uh, kitchen so that when my beautiful man comes home, I don't have to clean up. <laughs> it's already done. It is already done. And I'm giving you chance. And I'm giving you a chance to clean up your kitchen if you're cooking along with me, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, there's so much crap on my freaking floor. Seeds, onions, and Kitty staring up at me with those big green eyes saying, feed me. Okay, so here we have, here we have it, here we have it. Uh, let me look into that, let me look into that. Female reproductive is going to support the organs and glands that are responsible for um, uh, regulating your female hormones. So that doesn't necessarily only mean the ovaries, right? The female reproductive, um, formula is going to work on your thyroid as well. So here we go. I'm putting in the onion and the um, uh, pumpkin seeds that we had right there. Just going to break it up a little bit. And I do think that was a good idea to put the onions through twice. And this is what it looks like. Right, so you just want to break that up. You don't want anything sticking together here before you start mixing all of the ingredients in together. You want it to kind of be, you know, broken up like that, you know what I'm saying? So yes, this is looking good. This is looking good. Okay. Okay. We are almost ready to mix it up, baby. But first, we got to put in the seasonings. So that is a lot of vegetables. What do we have in here so far? Well, we have about six cups of mushroom. And the description contains, the description for this video has the recipe. So go check it out. Six cups of mushrooms, finely chopped, 400 grams of organic roasted chestnuts, finely chopped, two cups of raw seeds, so I use pumpkin, finely ground, four large carrots, and you know what? That probably wasn't two cups. That's not two cups at all. That was more like 300 grams, but anyhow. <laughs> um, we had a small red beet. We had four large carrots. We had four stalks of celery. We actually had six stalks of celery. It doesn't matter. It's like either one, right? Whatever you've got, whatever you're inspired to put in. Um, six large garlic cloves. I think I did more like eight. Um, we had a red bell pepper, finely chopped and squeezed dry, but we actually used three yellow peppers that we got the pulp from. Um, what else? Uh, half a cup of raisins, finely chopped. 
one cup of dehydrated tomatoes, not in oil, finely chopped. And I didn't have any olives, but I had about two tablespoons of capers, maybe a little bit more of capers, finely chopped. Now into this, we're gonna add some green seasoning, which I have already made, but the recipe is there for you. It's a Trinidadian green seasoning, which has all of the quintessential flavors of my home country. Trinidad and Tobago, yes indeed. And we are going to add that in, but let me wash this out. Okay, we are back, we are back, we are back. Okay, so I've got some green seasoning here and that recipe is, mm, oh my God, that doesn't look like much. It just looks like green vegetable matter, but when I tell you it smells so good. When I tell you it smells so good. So this green seasoning is a mixture of, um, where, where is it? What's it a mixture of? Uh, six sprigs of chives, 30 leaves of culantro or shadow benny. Mm, I love that shadow benny smell. It's like cilantro. Um, five stalks of celery, 10 cloves of garlic, five sprigs of thyme, one scotch bonnet pepper, 10 pimento peppers, quarter cup of water, blend well, store in the fridge. That is so good. I also just remembered I need to go get some pimento pepper for my uh, my my vegetable mixture here. But I am going to put in one tablespoon of the green seasoning mixture and not anymore because the last time I put in too much green seasoning mixture, I heard about it from both. Dali and Kaya. So I was like, okay, that was a boo-boo, sorry. So one tablespoon, that's all that's going in. I know if it were up to me, I'd be putting like two, three, four tablespoons in here, but you know, but you know, but you know. Can you do me a favor? Can you put out a little bit of food for the cats before you go out? Because um, they're a little bit hungry. I know. Hi. Okay, so I've got my I've got my mixture here. I need to go get some pimento peppers. There's always something else I've got to add in. There's always one more thing. Let me go get that. Oh, hi, Kitty. You're so helpful. So I'm also going to put a little bit of this scotch bonnet pepper. Which is, again, another one of those 
flavors and tastes of Trinidad. This one does have some heat in it, so just be careful. Don't put too much, and if you want to really conserve on the heat factor, do not use the seeds. Be very careful when you chop this. You don't want to get any of this oil or the juice directly on your hands. It is scotch bonnet. It is hot. Hot. Just a little bit. Just a little bit will go a long way. We'll add that. Mm. I'm just going to give that a fine mince. So, all right, we're just going to add that to the top of that mixture. And I want to get a brand new knife because knowing me, I'm going to forget that that has scotch bonnet on it, scotch bonnet on it, get it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. I'm just spreading it around a little bit on the top of here so that it gets a little bit incorporated. Okay, so let me get rid of this, put this back in the freezer. And I'm going to get rid of this chopping board and this knife. One time. Glad that you guys are still here with me. How's it going? How are you doing? How is your Christmas prep going, you guys? Are you guys all ready for the Christmas season? I know Christmas can be a really weird time of year for a lot of people, you know? I'm fully aware. It could be for me too if I let it, but I'm not going to let it get to me like that. I'm not, I'm going to choose where I want to, how I want to feel, where I want to stand on the topic of anything. But I am aware that Christmas can feel very lonely. Christmas can feel very sad because you don't, you perceive that the people in your life that you love are gone because they're dead. So you have this perception that, you know, you're alone. It's not true, but that's okay. If that's what your perception is. Can I go cleanse it with grease? Hey, you can't ask me that kind of stuff on camera. No, you sage. No, use sage. You sage. If you want to know, it's in the, it's in Glenda. In one of the containers in there. Open up the um, okay. So I'm just lightly chopping up 
freaking chopping board is moving around like crazy because I don't have my slip free mask underneath it. My slip free thing. What's it called? That. Why does Cindy have a wrench by her name? Great question. I asked Cindy to be um, one of my moderators a little while back. Somebody who could be in here in case there's any, you know, troll activity going on. So that means that she's a moderator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means she has the ability to um, remove a comment or to remove a person from the chat if, let's say, some troll pops in and goes, you suck ass. I don't know. Something stupid. She She's on it, and she'll be like, oh, delete. Go away. Fuck off, basically. Yeah, and it just happened around a little while back. Remember that troll that we had in here? What was her name again? Lish. Yeah. And we were discussing it, and she was right on top of it. And sometimes I don't see comments on time. Right, Emoji King? That's right. I'm not ignoring you. It's just that I'm busy, and I can't see all the things all the time. So I asked Cindy because she was in on all of that as it was happening and she was kind of alerting me at the time. I was like, hey, could I turn you on as a moderator? Can I turn you on, baby? Cindy, can I turn you on? Can I turn you on as a moderator so that if my head is down and I'm not seeing all of the comments and you see something that is inappropriate, can you just silence it for me? If you would like to be a moderator too, Kelly, that would be awesome because you're always in here, right? Just let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am Puerto Rican and they make the same thing but pronounce it pasteles. Pasteles. And use banana instead of masa and wrap them with banana leaves. Oh, you can make this with plantain. Oh, oh baby. Yes, you can. I have some beautiful ripe plantain in the freezer downstairs. And you can totally make the corn portion of this with plantain. Absolutely. 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 Yes, all of the, um, uh, so Puerto Rican and anything with a Spanish or Portuguese influence in the Caribbean, which is most of the Caribbean islands, have some form of um, corn pie, corn handheld or corn packet pie kind of thing. We're not going to have time today, I can tell, to make the corn part of this. Although I might. I might just whip one up. You know what I'm saying? I'm here in the kitchen anyhow, and this is kind of like what I would be doing now. I'd be like, ooh, and Dolly loves pastels with the corn. Now, disclaimer, corn, unless you're using genetically, non-genetic, non non-GMO corn, which is organic, as long as you're using that, it's not going to be inflammatory to the system. But use at your own discretion and use, um, you know, eat it as a special treat food. Don't eat it like every day because it will tend to have an inflammatory response in your body. So you got to be careful of that. Watch your body. Listen to your body. Don't overdo it on certain of those things. And keep those things down to like a minimum. So I think I used five pimento peppers in that. Mm, and that gives it that beautiful. Pimento peppers are not hot, not spicy at all. And they are um, seasoning peppers. And they're so delicious. So delicious. Yum, yum, yum. To fix something exactly what a wrench is for exactly. Oh, yes. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me go put these in the freezer because... I buy these up here, $3 for 10. It's like crazy. 
super expensive, uh, $3 for this little wee bag. So I buy them and I freeze them. I buy them frozen actually, keep them in the freezer and use them beautifully in my recipe. So let me put these back. Okay, Rockstar Ruiz, what is the recipe for making the pasteles with um, banana? And in Trinidad, we also wrap these in banana leaf as well to steam them. I don't have any on hand, so I'm not going to be using any of that. What do I need to add to this, though? Let me see. Okay, here come the seasonings. Here come the seasonings. And my seasoning is spicy, y'all. My Bernsey burgers, I like them rich, I like them spicy, I like them exploding with flavor in my mouth, so I am not shy with seasoning. So here are the seasonings we need. Let's pull them out. We need chipotle chili powder, check. Make a nice little clean surface over here, shall we? Yes, we shall. Yes, we shall. So at the risk of preparing anything on here that is, you know, a little bit more acidic than I would usually want to prepare, I am going to show you how I make them with, um, with the corn. Well, let's just pretend that I have organic non-GMO corn, okay? <laughs> Uh, Rockstar says, I definitely have to make the Bernsey burgers. Yes, you really do. <laughs> and Rockstar Ruiz, Kelly says, they're good. I'm missing out, LOL. Yes, you are, but don't worry. You're you're missing out just because you were on an all juice cleanse, right? So you were, you're not missing out. You're catching up. You'll get, you'll get to making this yourself. So I need a little bit of black pepper. I have chipotle. I have some chili powder, bam. Um, I need my oregano, my oregano, where do I have the oregano? I need some, a little bit of nutmeg, Let's see oregano here, shut, where is the oregano, and what is this, I don't know what this is, Brown uh, cinnamon, pumpkin seeds. Where's the oregano? <clears throat> Damn it. Why, oh, right in front of me when I pulled open the drawer. My nose is seriously running, you guys. I am detoxing. Yes, I am. Okay, so we got this, we got that, we got that. We need some cumin. Cumin. And we need some battery power for my iPad soon. Okay, we need some... Uh, I don't have any more Angostura bitters. I need some soy-free seasoning. Where is it? Okay, I got this, I use this for my soy free seasoning. And what else do we need? I think we can start getting that in there. Okay, so we've got five to six pimento peppers chopped. We've got two teaspoons of oregano. Here we go. Just getting my 
measuring spoon. Okay, let's get our big concoction of stuff here going. I hope you guys are having a good afternoon with me here, keeping focused on the positive stuff. Yes, we are. So I got uh, oregano, two teaspoons of oregano, which I need to get more of. One, two. Now, I don't have any time, but I have this mystery spice right here, and it kind of smells like Italian. So I'm going to assume there's some thyme in there. Now I'm going to use that in my burger. I wish I knew what it was. I don't know, but it smells good and it's going in. Okay, in lieu of the thyme. I think there's some rosemary in there as well, so that's all going to be good. So two of those. Two teaspoons of that, and I do not know what that is. Literally, I don't know what's in there. Because uh, I just don't remember. Okay, so cumin. How much cumin? Let's go with paprika first. Paprika! We need three teaspoons or one tablespoon of paprika. One. Two. I'm going to sneeze pretty soon because of all of these spices hitting my nose. That's why I'm standing back a little bit. I put the cute, did I put the cumin in? Not yet. I'm doing it in order so I don't mess up. See, Kelly, I need to follow a recipe too sometimes and go down the list. I have a, a strategy. After I put something in, it goes over to here off of the chopping board. Generally speaking, shoot, did I put... I did not put chili in. And that's why I go straight down my list, right? If you are having a hard time remembering what you've put into your recipe, then check mark it, like cross it off the list. Two teaspoons of chipotle powder, so this is one. And this is two. And guys, this needs to be big flavor because when you go to have it in a burger, you don't want to taste the flavor lost in the other flavors, right? So you want to you wanna remember that. But also bear in mind that these seasonings blends are, they're intense. So if you're making them for a family, you know, you might want to back off on that, especially if you guys don't like spicy food, but we do here. So um, what am I holding in my hand right now? I'm also holding chili powder, and I already put chipotle, and I had written down there two teaspoons chipotle chili powder, so I'm not putting that chili powder in. Cumin, next on the list is one teaspoon of cumin, so let's put that in. Just sprinkle it all on top. Oh my God, I'm, I'm so excited for these burgers, you guys. They are, by the way, they take like 10 times longer, literally, to make. Not literally five. These usually take two hours for me to whip up when it's just me in the kitchen. But when I'm doing a show and it's live, then I'm going to stop and it's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, half a teaspoon of black pepper. Like so. Linda just made those cute little cucumber scoops with avocado and added sprouts. Awesome. Yes, that's what we made and what we had at the beginning. Yeah, Kelly said, um, Rockstar, we said, you're missing out. I'm missing out. And guys, I guess you are. Yeah, these burgers are really, really good. Oh, if you did an all juice cleanse, you didn't miss anything. I do remember now. That's what Burns said it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, these are good. You guys want to be making them. Um, if you're in, and this is one of the recipes, you guys, that we're going to have that we recommend that you can use for your, um, your warm up to our juice detox. And then these are also to show you what you can have after your detox. So that is it so far. So a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt. Let's sprinkle some of that on there. That seems like a lot. I'll put a little bit less in there. 
just a little bit less than that. And then um, three tablespoons of the soy free seasoning. And then we're finally ready to mix, you guys. Yes, we are. Oh, I'm so excited. I am so excited. So this is one. Two. Three tablespoons and we are done with the spices and the seasoning for this. Okay, here comes the fun part. Mixing this up. And this bowl is like not big enough. Shit. Where's my other super big bowl? Okay, I'm just going to go in here with my, I don't want to go in with my hands just yet because that scotch bonnet pepper is right up there at the top and I don't want to get burnt from my scotch bonnet pepper, you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna carefully start lifting it up and mixing it. And you can see it is still very, very dry. You see that? Just gonna get in there with my hands because your hands are your best utensils. Never apologize for using your hands to mix stuff. Never apologize, my hands are clean. Wish, <laughs> no, they're clean. I've been washing so many things here. Okay, so I'm gonna go in. Just gonna pull it all up, mix it all around. Get all those different layers going. Oh, I'm out of camera. I'm, I'm off my mark. I'm off my mark. Just get that all mixed in. Get all those mushrooms that we put in right at the bottom. Get all of that going. Oh, boy. The smell of the green seasoning and the pimento peppers and the garlic. And the onion, oh my God, this smells like home, you guys. This smells like Trinidad. Yes, it does. You just wanna get it all incorporated, get it all mixed in. The capers as well, the capers and the raisins are like such a big part of this dish. So that just makes me happy, you know what I mean? It's just so good. Now, if you don't want to use cornmeal, if you're going to be doing these, making these into the little patty, into the little pie, if you don't want to use cornmeal for that because you really want to keep it as, you know, anti-inflammatory as possible, you can use the buckwheat um, dough that we made for the buckwheat pizza. Yes, the raw vegan buckwheat pizza for the win, right? You can use that. Or you don't have to do the corn part at all. You can just form these into, into patties and put them in the dehydrator and bam, put a little mustard pickles on top of that and you're just good to go. So you can see as I'm starting to squeeze it together, it's starting to hold together. Like a burger. like a little hors d'oeuvre size burger. Look at that. See that? And as it goes through the dehydrator, it will darken. Mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, that's got some nice heat. Got a beautiful flavor. Perfectly balanced, really. 
That's the true way of mixing anyway, right, Kelly? Yeah, baby. I love you, Kelly girl. I love you. I just want to make sure everything is mixed in. Get it all pulled up from the bottom. Turn it around. Mix it really, really well. And there you have it. And then you can start making your burgers. You just start making them first into a meatball. Got just the right amount of moisture. And just like so. You start forming your patties. Just like so. You can also spread this. You can also just have this with your crackers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cindy says, go easy on the green seasoning that Dali and Kaya don't like. I know. I did. I only put one. Oh, that's so good. I only put one tablespoon. Guys, this is so freaking good. And right there, you have a Burnsy burger. You can also just sprinkle this out on your dehydrator tray, which I want to try. And then you'll just have, um, you'll, it'll just be like a ground beef when it's done, you know? And then I also want to try putting some of these right into the cornmeal patty part that we can then steam. So it is going to be cooked. You can do a version lightly cooked with this filling but this filling is everything you guys this is so good mm. that's probably my best version so far so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean my hands off i'm going to go get one of the dehydrator trays and while we hang out while we chill out what do you want to talk about while, while I mix up these burgers. By the way, I think this is going to be the, the evening check-in at the same time because, you know. This is so freaking good. Mm. Wow. Jesus, that is good. You guys, I'm not even kidding you right now. That is some seriously good food. Kelly, tell me, you can have this instead of lamb and be happy, couldn't you? You've made it before. This is the kind of thing that you want to have as a weekly staple in your diet, in your menu, in your program. Look at this. Raw vegan. Does that not just look exactly like meat? Come on. Tell me. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I went easy. It is exactly the right amount. You don't even have to do anything else. You just put this in a bowl and you eat it. Holy wow. Fire. So good. All of the different levels of flavor are coming through. I can taste everything that I put in there, but all, it's just like works together. Okay, let me stop eating. Let me start rolling out some patties. So I'm going to get one of these um, 
wire racks for my dehydrator. I'm just going to form up my patties and put them right onto the wire rack while we hang out and chat for a little bit. Oh, Kelly, you said same. I'm so glad to spend the day with you and the group. I thank you all. Oh, you're so welcome, babe. You're so loved. You're so welcome. My dad is Puerto Rican and my mom is Mexican. She did all the cooking. So I only know how to cook Mexican food. LOL, had to go to my aunties to eat Puerto Rican food. Oh my God, that is awesome. That is, that is awesome. Now, what do I want to do here? I want to form a good amount of these into burgers, y'all. Okay, but I need to watch my time too because, and my energy. I'm starting to feel a little bit like, oh my God, I want this kitchen um, prep to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make the burgers right now. I'm just going to mash that back up into there. What I do want to do is I want to make some of the pastels with the corn flour. Um, and show you guys how those come together as pastels in case any of my Trini people want to really try this recipe. But again, and I'm going to come back and roll out the, the patties either tonight or tomorrow. But again, that is just like everything you want. Yeah, so I will take care of that. We'll also put it onto a dehydrator sheet. Maybe I'll do that real quick. So I've got one of these uh, trays with a little bit of, you know, the holes. These came with the Samson dehydrator, and I'm just going to sprinkle uh, sprinkle some of this. Oh, I didn't put in the nutmeg. That's okay. I'm not going back and remixing that. So what you can do is you can just spread some of this out on on your dehydrator tray like this, just loosely, and then brown that down. You know, with the dehydrator, we're only cooking it up to. 118, maximum 120 degrees, no more than 120. I set mine at um, 113. But we're just going to spread it out like so. And I'm telling you what, guys, you put this in a little raw vegan wrap and you got yourself a taco. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be like ground beef. And it's going to be amazing. And it's all <laughs> raw vegan, except for the roasted chestnuts. Okay. But if you wanted to leave out the roasted chestnuts, just add in some more seeds or mushrooms or whatever, another component, another vegetable. I tend to use vegetables in my Burnsy burger that I know are not going to feel or taste bitter. I don't use zucchini. I don't use any of the wetter vegetables, right? I try to keep it relatively dry. Okay, so we got it going on like so. And we will have a fair bit of this um, better than ground meat and better than beyond burger ground meat. This is so much better for you. It has no soy, it has no gluten, you know, that textured vegetable protein is soy and the, the wheat gluten, the seitan, that stuff is not your friend, not at all your friend. So we're just going to spread that out, just put, put a little space in between everything here, right? We want that just to get in the dehydrator and then it's going to be like ground beef, baby. I got to get a batter, I got to get a cord for my iPad here. Hold on.
Hey, hey, hey there, Dr. Strange is in the house. I'm oddly in the mood for Angus beef. You need to make this instead of Angus beef. Please do your body a favor. Do your body a favor. You don't need Angus beef. You just want the taste and the texture of something substantial in your mouth and you think it's beef. I encourage you to try this instead. Seriously, as a raw vegan, to know that you can eat this way and not miss the beef. Mm, mm, mm. I think I have a burger mixture in the freezer. Oh my God, do you? I didn't put them in the dehydrator, just froze the mixture. That you can do as well. That you can do as well. So I am going to put this in the dehydrator. Won't take that long because it's all kind of broken up and it's not really, you know, big. But it will turn brown. It's, this will turn brown. I'm going to show you. Let me put this in. Okay, so we have a whole tray in the dehydrator, and look at how much more we have. Like, we made a ton, a ton of this mixture. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to show you how to make that corn pie, the corn tamale type thing that we call pastels in Trinidad. I'm going to show it to you. Please bear in mind that if you are on a healing journey and you're really, really working at clearing out some major stuff as yet, you may want to forego this part of the recipe and not do the corn, but if you can get your hands on a good quality, organic, non-GMO corn, I cannot stop eating this. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Then it's not going to be inflammatory. I'm oddly in the mood for Angus beef. Dr. Strange. Mm. Moss, you're back. This is so good, Moss. This tastes just like a training pastel boy or girl. You know what I mean. Mm. Okay. Let's make the corn tortilla part, the corn part of this dish shall we yes we shall and this portion is actually cooked and dali who has been on a juice fast since june 21st he loves this kind of stuff and it does not he does not feel any negative effects in his body from it so I need to get some a pot of water started. Hang on. A pot of water. Let me get let me clear this spot here for a minute. For a quick second. This part comes together really quickly, but I do need some space. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, I think I hear my man. Yep. 
I knew it. <laughs> I said, I think I hear my man. Ballybor. Ballybor. You got a, you got mail addressed to Ballybor? Ballybor. Ballybor. No, it's mental desertion. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm still alive. I made are some, you still alive? Yes, yeah, made some beautiful. You are just alive. I'm still alive, yeah. Let me see, what, 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 what did I get in here? Okay, I'm still alive. You see? Last All right. time I got some gloves. No, not this time. Okay, so we are going to make the corn part of this pastel. And a moss, your back. So yeah, this this pastel meat that's raw vegan is just like, it's everything, man. Oh my God, it's so good. I wouldn't, be, you wouldn't believe what just happened. Tell us, tell us, what is it? Tell us. And not smell, yeah, right? I was talking about having to buy veggies. My neighbor just came by and gave us limes and bananas. Oh my God, manifestation in action, my Your friend. Bonus? I did find that as I was cleaning out the front yeah. office today. Go look. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna make this corn part of this pastel. Let's get on it. Because my man is home. I am not using organic non-GMO cornmeal, but I do have some on order. So pretend that I'm doing it the right way, okay? And if you can get this um, organic non-GMO corn, then I highly recommend doing that. But if you can't, use at your own discretion, baby. You do you. I'm making this up. I just moved this. Did you move it? You're good. I'm just making this up. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use my own discretion when I eat it and monitor my body. That's right. So let's do it. Corn flour, whichever one you can get your hands on. And like I said, non GMO and organic is always going to be better. I moved it again. I know it's in a really shitty spot. You can actually we can move that back Sorry. onto the countertop oh, no because I had put it there when I was using the the mini chopper. Okay, so to this I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. That so cantaloupe delicious. juice was so good, by the way. Thank you so much for juicing that last. Time. Yeah, that is awesome. Say hello. Everybody always loves when you come on. What is up with the flashing light? What was that? Did you see that? What was it? All the lights were flickering there. Yeah, I know. Gotta, I don't know what I that was. An, I have an awesome energy here. That's why. You know, that is why. Yeah. <laughs> that's so sweet. My husband bought a bunch of bananas, and I said, what did you bring those for? He said, I asked for them. I did not ask, but he said, look at your text message, whatever. I can feed them to my bunny. Oh, my God, that's hilarious, mm -hmm. Kelly. That would be so good in the nori wraps. Oh, it would be. Taste, do you want to taste the, um, let's have, let Dali have a taste yeah. test. The Bernsey Burger? Of the Bernsey Burger pastel style. Okay. Oh, my God, this is. So I think this is the best one I've ever done. This is the best one yet, it's babe. It's like, uh, like you make uh, this. Like my Palau, how every Palau. single one is different? Yeah, and every single time it's good. And every single time it's good and different. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit different than the last time, but I like this one. I like it, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's perfectly seasoned. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Dolly gives it the stamp of approval. We are good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm mixing up the um, the recipe for the pastel for the corn flour part of this. So I'm going to add two cups of warm water to two cups of corn flour with a little bit of salt. So let me grab that. How's work today? Looks good. Yeah. It was, uh, 
service pool in the morning and then uh, you know, we spend the rest of the day at the shop. Tomorrow we'll get another service call. So, busy. It was, it was a good day. Not bad. Good. Yeah. yeah. We might not be going ice fishing. No. Yeah. Don't say that word on my show. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay, good. Because of the C word. No, no, no. No, it's not that because it's uh, it's, it's, it's a lockdown. Now. Yeah, it's a lockdown now for the next 38 days, and that would be a southern part of Ontario. I see. So I also put in about a quarter of a cup of olive oil into that mixture. And into this mixture, I did not put all of the two cups of water because I wanted to see how much more I would need. And I'm just going to add a little bit at a time as I do this. So just want to form a dough that comes together and that is nice and stiff and sticking together without being too dry and without being too wet. So you just kind of have to eyeball this. And again, I'm going to go in and mix with my hands because that is the best way to check for texture when you're making any kind of dough or any kind of bread. I'm going to put the meat mixture right into it like that, undehydrated. No, okay, yeah. Yeah. Just like that. Oh, didn't go. It's okay. It's still go. No, we did grab the mixed veggies. Vegetables. We yeah, did. We I have the mixed good. vegetables, yeah. Oh yes, that's those. If we grab a, grab a cauliflower. Cauliflower. Where did you put cauliflower? The cauliflower? No, no, no. Oh, the mixed vegetables. Yeah. They're on the in the on the floor over there, babe. Oh. Over there. Okay, so that is the consistency and the texture that you want. Yeah, I wouldn't use cornstarch. Cornstarch is even worse even worse than corn flour when it comes to um, acidity. I'm going to, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with this. So you want to form some balls of dough that are like about a golf, golf ball size, about so big. Yay big as they say. And, and, yeah. Oh, look at these. Pickled cauliflower. Pickled cauliflower. Oh, yeah. I like this. Where's the camera? Which camera? Right there. Oh. This is my split camera. Right there. That's the camera. There you go. Tastes good. And so I'm going to get, I took a, a paper towel that I just put, I, I dampened a paper towel to keep the balls nice and um, from drying out because you don't want that to dry out. Yeah, cornstarch isn't going to do it. That's not going to be, that's not what you're looking for. Either corn flour or corn meal. A banana and a date smoothie is so good, Kelly. Yes, banana and date smoothie. Mm. Especially if you're wanting something a little more substantial, you know. So I'm going to just roll this out into approximately 10 balls like so. Try to kind of sort of get them the right size, the similar size. <clears throat> Oh, babe, can you do me a favor? Can you rinse out that pot that's on the stove, the blue pot, and just fill it up with some water? Sure. And get that boiling. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, so you can put those bananas to good use. Totally freeze them. You can make nice cream out of them. Yes, this is very similar to tamales. Absolutely. Cornstarch and potato starch since you're cooking it. Well, I've never used the actual cornstarch in if I'm gonna if I'm gonna make pastels, I'm just gonna make it with the corn flour, you know what I'm saying? 
and I don't have Promasa, and I am working on getting some organic non-GMO corn as well so that I can feel a little bit more confident. <laughs> Moss says, your boyfriend is right about the lights. High vibrations do that to the lights. Did you see it? Did you check that out? He came and he stood next to me here and everything just like flashed in the room. Yeah. Yep. God walked in the room. God walked in the room. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Our God consciousness. Did you listen to the Lori Ladd thing no, I sent I didn't you? Have oh, you should listen to it. It's good. Yeah. I think you really like her. Maybe. So I'm just rolling these out, and like I said, I'm going to put them under a wet. Yes, do the nice cream, Kelly. There you go. Bam. I'm just going to put them under the wet under a wet paper towel to keep them from drying out. You know, I don't like my balls too dry, okay? I like a little moisture in my balls. That's right. That's right, I said it. I said it. Make them approximately the same size, and what you're going to find is that how many did we get here? Eight, nine. But then you always have a little bit of, um, you know, leftover from when you form the these into pies. I'm going to show you. This is not going to be a traditional fold like we would do traditionally with the size and shape of a pastel. Although I could do that. But I have found a much faster, much easier way to do this. Let me show you. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay. Ay, 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 that was hot. Okie So what we're going to do is we're going to get my pastel press or tortilla press. I'm going to get a little bit of olive oil. To help it along, give a little bit of a coating, an oil coating on the one side, the side that's going to be um, on the outside of this. And let me just move these back here. I eat a lot of calories because I think it's healthy. What can it hurt? Well, if you eat food that is too calorie dense, regardless of if you're eating a raw diet or not, it can hurt, right? It, it's, it's too much for your body. You don't need all that. Um, it's not about the calories. It's about the density of the food. Like I don't like having too much nuts in my diet. You know what I mean? Because it's a dense food. So check this out. I got these, I got these three handy dandy arepa or pie makers. Look at how cool that is. And I find this to be the perfect size. I got them. This is the medium one. This is the small one. And this is the large one. But today we're going to use this, the medium size one. You know what? We can also do some mini ones. Let's do some mini ones. No, but I already cut the dough for that size. We'll do the medium. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a... Let me start with the one of the slightly bigger ones. I need some saran wrap. Are you guys riveted by this mesmerizing content here? I love you guys. I love that you love hanging out with me. I love that you are here with me in my kitchen as we're whipping these things up together. I love how the energy and the vibe changes from hour to hour when we live stream. You know what I mean? So if you're just tuning in now, if you're just finding me now, 
we're just hanging out in my kitchen, baby. We're just hanging out in the kitchen making some pastels for Christmas because this is a Christmas thing to do in Trinidad, right? So I'm going to dip it in a little bit of that oil, like so. I'm going to just put it down on the pastel press or the tortilla press. And I'm just going to press it down like so. Not all the way because I want it to have a bit of a thickness to it. I don't want it to be super thin. Et voila. A perfect pastel. Now, in traditional pastel making, you would put the meat inside here and you'd fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it. But I have found that there is a much, much, much happier way for me to do this. So I press it down like so, and that helps cut the dough into the circle behind it. And then I just move away this excess. And that's going to become another one over time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it right on top here, just like so. And then check it out, you guys. I'm a little excited. You'll forgive me. We're just going to put the filling right into the middle like so. And if you wanted to add a little extra raisins because you're a little extra or at a little extra... Um, uh, capers go right ahead. I'm going to just go like this and I'm just going to gently squeeze down, just gently squeeze down until it kind of starts squishing out of the edges like that. This is what I find makes the perfect, uh, the perfect pie because it gives you a nice amount of cornmeal on the outside. Look at that. But a bing, but a boom. Look at that. Now, if you wanted to not cook this, I mean, I imagine you can put this in the dehydrator. We should put one in the dehydrator and see how it goes. Let me do that. Let me pop this one in. So if you wanted to keep that 100% raw, aside from the chestnuts, of course, as we've mentioned, um, just put it in the dehydrator, see how it goes, right? Or you could just forego the corn part altogether, just make them into, into patties. So we're gonna do that again. Let's do, let's make some more. And these ones we're going to put on a steamer basket and steam them for 15 minutes. So just press it down, not all the way. You don't want it to make it super flat. You want it to still have some body to it. Then you take the back part of the pie maker, cut it out. Could you do me a favor? Can you bring me the steamer basket from downstairs in the, never mind, I'll get it. You can't even walk by there. What is it? I'll be right back. What was I going to Okay, so I have a steamer basket, and this is what they're going to sit on over a pot of hot water. So again, I'm just going to place this down here, right on top of this handy-dandy pie maker, just like so. And I'm just going to scoop some of this raw vegan meat mixture in here. Of course, it's not going to be raw vegan once it gets cooked, but if you're going to have any kind of cooked food, make it alkaline. How do I unpause this? Um, 
defrost this the best way? Um, in a Something. bowl of hot water, maybe. Just put the, the, the thing, if you need it defrosted shortly, like now. Okay, and that was a totally overstuffed pastel, but that's okay. We're just going to press it down a little bit more. That totally messed it up. Okay, somebody is busting up my, 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 my stride here. What? What do you need? <laughs> do you think it'll crack the glass if I use hot water? Would, I wouldn't do super hot. I would just put some water, but if okay. it's... Okay, that works. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, that was my fault. I busted that up. I put too much filling, but... You know, you know how I get Kaya when I'm trying to focus on something, asking me all these questions about how to defrost juice. I'm just being careful. I know, it's all good. Let's put another one on here. Let's put another one on here. So let's go again. And this time I won't put as much filling into it and it won't get all messed up. So you're just gonna press it down on your tortilla press, just like so. If you get any cracks, just push it back together. Oh, nice. Uh, Ravika says, my four and seven year old kids love watching you too. Hi, kids. Hello. Hang on. I'm just scrolling back up to see the comments. Okay. I've missed so much today. Hey, Kelly. I mean, uh, Alana, that's how it goes sometimes. No, no stress. No worries. We're just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? We're just hanging out, baby. So just to recap, I'm making these pastels, which are a Trinidadian favorite at Christmas time. I am using, I have some in the, in the dehydrator, just um, kind of make, mm, mm, the meat mixture scattered on the tray so that I make a, how would you say, like a minced meat kind of, uh, minced beef kind of, uh, kind of situation. And um, I'm also now making pastels with the, with the mixture inside of this corn tortilla. Now, I will have big disclaimer here, you guys. Use corn at your own discretion, especially corn flour. Try to use uh, organic non-GMO corn because that's going to be less inflammatory to the system. I saw some of the other comments just now around soy and tofu, and I will address those. Look at how, look at how beautiful and perfect that one came out. Look at that. Is, is that a thing of beauty or what? Is that an arepa from the gods? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Not like my first, the other one that I totally busted up because I overfilled. Oh, well. So it is. So it is. So it goes sometimes. Nice cream is now one of my go-to desserts. That is awesome. Oh, I wanted to ask you, Moss, how did you make your nice cream? What did you use? I want to make some coconut ice cream. My mom used to make the best coconut ice cream. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Freshly grated coconut. Yeah, man. She was a boss. She was amazing in the kitchen. Genius. Genius in the kitchen, I tell you. I don't know if that's going to fit. I need to go a little bit flatter on that one. There we go. So yeah, if any of you have made nice cream, what is your favorite recipe? Let me know, let me know. I'm not a huge fan of bananas once they've been frozen. I really think it's, I don't know what it does to it. It just, mm, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. It looks exactly like an empanada. Soy gives me a headache. Yes, soy is so bad for you, you guys. Um, Go and watch Detox 102. I went through, how many slides did I do in Detox 102 on soy? 
13 slides on soy and why soy is not good for you. You want me to put them up while I finish, while I do the, while I do this? Let me put up the slides and we'll talk, let's talk about soy. Hang on a second. Let me just quick. I think I'm eating just to eat. That's okay. Eat some good shit. Eat some good food. I forgot how good raw foods can make me feel. Memory doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Yay. Did you just get, did you get those presses? I don't remember seeing them before. Yeah. I just got these, pre this press recently, recently. It's, you can find them on Amazon. Although I got this one locally. It looks like tamales, by the way. What's the deal with tofu? Well, tofu is made from soy. Yes, it is. Tofu is made from soy. I don't think soy is good. No, it's not for people to eat. No, it's not. Soy, pumpkin seeds, garbanzo. Well, pumpkin seeds are fine. Garbanzo are fine on occasion. And it's soy. So we want to talk about what soy is. What's pumpkin seeds? Seeds of the pumpkin. Pumpkin. Pumpkin seeds. I eat a lot of pumpkin seeds. That's fine. Anything you can make into milk, you can make into tofu. Mm. Soy is bad, big bad. Burns went over soy in her Detox 102 class. You should check it out. Yes, but I will put up the slides now as well. Yeah, pumpkin seeds are fine. I don't know why. Pumpkin seeds are fine. They're seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will... Let me, first of all, hold on. Okay, so pumpkin seeds are not, seeds and nuts are good for us because they're structural foods. Okay, so don't worry. Peanut butter, one spoon of peanut butter and a frozen banana. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay, what is an alternative to soy? Nothing, you don't need soy. Give it up, give it up. Give it up. It looks like an empanada. Soy gives you a headache because it's so bad for you. That's why. Okay, so let's look at the, the slides on soy and the soy myth. Let's start right here. All right, so as I do this, I'm going to quickly get the rest of these pastels done. So in the meantime, just have a look at the slides here that I will pop up on the side. These are from Detox 102 the Detox 102 class, all right? So when you learn the basics of health, you really start to understand what's good for you and what's not good for you, all right? And we have to unlearn a whole lot of stuff that people have told us are good and even stuff culturally, right? Rockstar Ruiz, like the beans and rice, it's the same thing. No, well, my culture, we eat soy all the time, right? The Japanese culture, the Oriental cultures have soy tofu in their diets all the time. They have rice in their diet. That does not mean that it's fit for human consumption. That's another one done. Let me put this one going that way. Okay, so let's keep this rolling. Let's keep this rolling. All right, so that was the first slide on soy. You guys can read read the slides to yourselves as I continue to make this, right? So uh, ask yourself and try to investigate who might benefit from whatever whatever information is being given. And this these slides are all based on Dr. Morse's uh, book. This is from his module seven, his module number seven in his book, the Detox Miracle Source Book. All right. Oh my goodness. If that ever happens with your with your stuff, you can just press it back together like this. All right. So yeah, you can you can um you can call soy a health food all you want, but the fact of the matter is it is not health food. Oop, gotta press it out. It is not health food. Like I said, check out these slides. If you want to see the whole discussion that we had around this lesson, you want to go to check out Detox 102 because it is all outlined. Um, we, that's where I covered all of this stuff, Detox 102. Oh, that is a big one. That's a big one. Just getting these ready for the next round. 
All right, so we go like this. Dolly usually likes some Ivar popped into here, but I'm not gonna put them for these ones. He can add those on the side. I think this has all the flavorings that we need in here. Perfect, right? I love this little thing. Now you can also use, instead of corn for this, you can also use some of the, the buckwheat dough that we made for the, you remember, for the, um, the, the pizza. Yeah, you can use that totally. I want to do one more, but let me start these ones up. So these are just going to go on top of a pot that is about the same size as this with about an inch of boiling water. We're just going to steam those for 15 minutes while we finish whoops, pressing and whipping up the rest. By the way, thank you so much, everybody, who's <clears throat> all of you who have been hanging out with me and with all of us. Do you know Raw Christina? Yes, I do. Kelly follows her as well. She introduced me to raw foods. I really like Raw Christina. I think she uses way too many nuts in her food. I, I can't, I can't eat a lot of what she makes, so I modify. You know. So what's the next slide say on the soy issue? Ext acid forming, extremely high in phytic acid blocks mineral absorption, especially zinc, full of enzyme inhibitors. Why is it important to not eat food full of enzyme inhibitors? Because the enzymes contained within our food are really important for the catalytic um, uh, activity and functioning of food, digestion, everything. So when you have when you have when you're eating food that prevents enzyme action in your body, that's not good for your body. Extremely hard to digest. 85% of genetically modified, also called Roundup Ready soybeans, where the cell DNA and structure are combined with herbicides and bacteria to create resistance to these factors. So they're genetically modifying our food, you guys, and it is not good for the body. Not good. Might be good for growing a crop. Might be good for their not good bottom line for your body. Some people may say the same thing about corn, but, you know, again, do you want to eat soy products? Go right ahead, but go into it knowing what you're doing to your body. Be aware. Be awake. Be aware. Be awake. Be aware. Perfect, right? Full of excess amounts of Hema gluten, a uh, clot causing comp compound, allergy causing, extremely high levels of aluminum, very toxic to brain and nerve tissues. And check this out over 80% of the oils and fats used in the USA today are from processed soybeans. Over 80% of the margarine made in the USA comes from soybeans. So anytime you see vegetable shortening or vegetable oil or, you know, God, the amount of margarine I have eaten, whoo, really, really not good. Not good for you at all. It's full of all this stuff. I try to keep my diet and my family's diet as clean as possible. Like I said, there are occasions when I will have something that is, 
not quite on the 100% clean list. If that is you, if you're healing something really, really strong in your body, just stay away from certain things like corn, like the one stuff I'm making right now. But if you're using organic non-GMO corn, then you're good to go. It's not easy to find. It's expensive to buy, uh, but it is so worth it. And you just want to eat these kind of things in moderation, all right? I wouldn't be binge eating this all day long. And I really do just prefer eating this stuff like this raw, just like this, because, oh my God. Mm, mm, mm. So good. But every now and then, and for a traditional food, it's not on the not fit for human list like some other things are, it's just a moderation type of food, okay? Just a moderation type of food. So yeah, soybeans, as most beans, have enzyme inhibitors that are also high in phytic acid. They must be processed at, a, at high temperatures to break these metabol metabolism blockers down. Yeah. I mean, soy is in everything when you look at it, right? It's crazy. And then I went in through all different ways that um, the methods that are required to break down and process the soybean oil. And here you can see a few different things that are going to... Um, uh, you're so welcome, Kelly. I hate margarine since I was young. I love margarine. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, my God. Don't tell me margarine is bad for me. I don't want to hear it. But it is. But it is. But it is. But it is. Isn't that just the cutest little thing ever? Well, let's make some little ones. Let's make some cuties. Let's make some cuties. Let me get my smaller, um, my smaller pie mold. The white one. This is a slightly smaller one, so you can see the difference in size. Not huge difference, but let's see how these little ones work. But yeah, I have made these using the buckwheat um, dough and buckwheat is not a grain. It is actually a seed. And um, that also works really well. But I just wanted to show you a traditional way to make these. I'm going to put in less because it's a smaller size. Oh my God, that is so cute. You can also make the pumpkin dough that we made before. So that is not gonna contain any corn. Cute, eh? So here you can see this is the larger size and this is the 
smaller size. Yeah, that was, those are cute. I like that size. I like that the size. Something about margarine just doesn't feel right. That's because it's not right. It's all hydrogenated and all kinds of crap. All kinds of crap. Damn, I got a headache from all that turmeric and ginger. It means it's working. Yep. It means it's clearing out some of that, that uh, the toxins there, Kelly. It's the lemon. It's not the turmeric and the ginger. Those are just some additives, I believe. I mean, turmeric, okay, yes, we know that it has good pro properties, as so does ginger, but it's that lemon. It's that electricity in the lemon, I believe. So I'm just going to finish pressing these out because that's what we came here to do. We came here to make some pastels, so we're going to make some pastels. We're going to make some pastels. We're going to make some pastels. Yeah, man. This portion of the show is not raw. This part is going to be steamed, but look at how cute those are. Oh my God. Super easy. So yeah, this corn mixture is one of the, the few things that I will allow into my diet on occasion. All right, on occasion. So lots of things that we covered in the soy. Uh, no, it's justified in this. It says, hold on. Hate is a harsh, but you know what I mean. Yeah. No, it's justified in this instant. I saw Tani make an onion wrap. Oh, my God. You're following all the good people, my friend. Yes. The onion wraps are, right? They're super cute, right? The little, the little guys, the little size. Yeah. Tani Raw is awesome, Moss. I'm so glad that you are into all of that. Guys, we've been live for five hours and 52 minutes. Oh, I love it. I love that you're here hanging out with me. Are you having a good time? Are you? I hope that you're enjoying it. I hope that you're relaxing. Hope that you're learning a few things. I hope that you're being inspired. Did you chop up any of the the <clears throat> mustard no. pickles? No, did no, you no, want? No. Oh yeah, did we... no, we didn't get any any olives. Sorry. No, we didn't get any olives, but it's okay. Yeah, I do want to have a little bit of uh, that, uh, pickled pickled uh, vegetables. Yeah. Do you want to make them into a mustard or no? no. Just chop, them up. Yeah, just chop them up. Well, babe, I think these pastels are going to be the best ones yet. And I think putting them in with the before they're dehydrated so that they have their own, yeah. you know, mm -hmm, right into the into the dough. I think that would be really good. You got a mini brain. <laughs> Cauliflower. Oh, awesome, Moss. Moss says that you suggested Tanny, so I subscribed instantly. Awesome, babe. Awesome. She's really, really good. Really good. I love I've watched her, I've watched her for a while, but when I started really just since I started um cooking the raw stuff or uncooking the raw stuff, really. Um Gosh, just this summer I, I found her, and I love her. I think she's so bright. She's so positive. Her recipes are, I find sometimes her recipes a bit bland, and I have to go in and season with my own. Uh, I have to adjust for seasoning. 
But overall, I think she's really, really good. There you go. I've got some olives here. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a little too late for this. Oh, I'm on my last one. Yay! Here comes the last one, you guys. Now you're going to make some more? Yeah. Some more what? With this? Or no. no. Mm -mm, you go ahead. I don't understand. Make some more what? No, instead of we're just putting a meat. I'm just putting the meat. some more of this in the guy too. Well, I didn't put any Ivar. I figure let's see how they taste without, and you can put Ivar on the side, you know? Okay. Have it as a dip. There you go. Want to drop a little bit of Ivar in that? <laughs> we'll build the last button. The last little button. And this is going to be the last one. And guess what? You guys are in luck because you're also going to be able to see us have a taste test of the finished um, pastel. But is this not the cutest little pastel maker? I mean, like I said, it's not the traditional um, square envelope packet that we would traditionally see as a pastel shape. But look at how cute that is. Super cute. Forget how long that's been in there. I think that's been in there 15 minutes. Yes, I do. And that is it, folks. That is it. The pastels are, the prep part is done. Oh, you already have some cooking? There? Yeah, there's some in there already. So that is done. Don't go far. Don't go far because we can... We can have a taste test, and then I'm not doing I'm not doing a nightly check-in because I spent six hours on here today. Yeah. So I need to um, chill out and relax. Don't go far. I want you to have a taste test. Yeah. Hold on. Like right now, just give it a just cut one open and let's let it cool off. I'll go fire up the heat and ah, I forgot my heat. Turn off the dehydrator then, babe. Okay, so here we have it. Some of them are a little bit cracked on the top, but that is okay. And mm, I think this can go in a little bit longer, yeah. maybe. No, yeah. it's usually 15 minutes. That's it, tops, because I don't want it to get too overcooked. You know what I mean? Okay, so these guys can go back. These ones can, can go on now, yeah. You want some of the water? Yes, you need a little bit more water. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, go and check out the um, Detox 102 because I had all of these um, soy myths laid out for you guys. Oh, thank you, Jillian. Thanks, Oops, sweetie. Jillian is my cousin. So great to see you here. But yeah, go check out Detox 102 with all of the other soy myths because the more we know, the more we know, you know? Lots of soy myths here. So yeah, we don't use um, we don't use this kind of stuff in our cooking. Remember, if it's not a fruit, a vegetable, a seed, or a nut, you probably don't need it and it's probably toxic to you. Bam. Simple, right? So here are the pastels. Jillian, look what I did. I made some some Trini pastels, raw vegan style, and these are going to give me trouble to get out of here because I did not use anything on the bottom, but that is okay because they will come off. You can put a little bit of parchment paper on the bottom or, hey, some banana leaf, if you have it, you know, would be great to line your steamer, poke a few holes, but I don't have that right now. So we're doing, we're making do with what we have. There we go. And Dolly is going to taste one. It's going to put some Ivar or the red pepper, um, Croatian red pepper spread. But yeah, this was fun. This was a fun day making all of these. 
And these are going to firm up nicely. They're going to stay together. And you can hold them in your hand, actually, which you normally don't do with the pastel. Can you pass me that black um, cookie? Yeah. Thank you. So I actually want to just put these onto a tray like this so that it can air dry properly on the bottom as well as the top. And I'm just putting the other tray into the, um, onto the, oh, this one's going to break apart. Don't break apart. Onto the pot with the steamer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mustard. If you get it on the inside, it's... Uh... That's sweet mustard. Yeah. Mustard pickles is usually sweet. So this is it. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this one broke apart a little bit. I really should have put those other ones on some parchment paper, but no, that's not happening. And if we cut inside, look at this, you guys. Look at that. All vegan. Raw until we just cooked that little bit, steamed it. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> you want to blow on that, babe. That is pretty darn good, you guys. If any of you have ever had a Trini pastel, I'm telling you, this is going to suffice. I'm not even kidding you. They look so good, don't they, Alana? They really do. I did put one in the dehydrator as well. Yes, I did. I'm going to test out a dehydrated version of this. I'm also going to test out a recipe using plantain for the wrapping instead of using corn so that, you know, we can have a more um, less potentially inflammatory wrapping, but this is traditionally how pastels are made. Um, did you put that other mustard back in the fridge, babe? Yeah, I did. <laughs> hmm, okay. I see it. Yeah. Okay, and usually pastels are served with mustard pickles, and I have some mustard here that I sweetened up with some maple syrup to kind of replicate that mustard pickle thing um, because I didn't have mustard pi pickles, the pickled vegetables, to do that recipe with yesterday. So I'm just using a little bit of mustard with maple syrup on here. Mmm. That is really good. What do you think of the meat not being dehydrated first, babe? Mm-hmm. Mmm. The flavor of this tastes just like a pastel. I would probably use that ground uh, mixture that I am putting in the dehydrator. I just sprinkled it on the tray and I'm letting it dehydrate for a little bit on its own. I probably would prefer it with that slightly dehydrated filling, but this is really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was wish I was brave enough to try and make these. What do you mean? What do you mean? You can do it, Alana, but get the non-GMO corn, like Burns said. Yes, get the non-GMO corn. Why not? You can do it. You can even do it. I want to try experimenting with a plantain-based um, instead of a corn-based wrapper. Mm. That's really good. Really good. Oh, yeah. I'm scared to use corn yet. Yeah, well, don't use corn. You can use the buckwheat. You can use, you, 
you can figure it out. You can make a different type of dough. You know how to make the different type of doughs now, right? The raw, the raw buckwheat. I made these with the raw buckwheat dough once, and it was really, really good. Put it in the dehydrator. Flavor, the taste was awesome. Mm-hmm. And you're right, Alana, you might want to hold off on using the corn until your inflammation in your body is really under control and it's way down because you're right, corn can be a little inflammatory. So you want to use this and eat it in moderation for sure, but it is really good. It's an infl inflammation for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, so is those David cookies I ate, and so is the lamb, and so is the focaccia bread. So if you're eliminating most all inflammatory food, balance, balance. I actually have no problem with corn. Good. It's the only grain that my intestines like. Okay, good. My intestines don't like any grain at all. Yeah, most people's intestines, we shouldn't be having too much grain in the body, but, um, or any grain at all, certainly. Yeah, and I know I might be giving you bad advice because I'm showing you that I'm using corn, but I use it in moderation and um, occasion on occasion, occasionally, not every, not as an everyday kind of food. You know, I don't have cereal for breakfast, followed by bread for lunch, followed by pastels for dinner. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I don't know if I could find non-GMO in Trinidad. Probably not. Probably not. Um, I'm going to try because I'm craving pastels. Well, you can make the pastels with other stuff as the dough. Okay. You can also just make the burgers. Oh my God. Just make the burgers with the with the meat filling, which is all raw vegan, you put your, listen, you can even do it raw. These Come on. Done? Yeah, they're done. done Moss, you could even go like this. You make a pastel patty. You don't even have to dehydrate it. It's so damn good. It's so damn good. Right. You can dehydrate that if you wish. You can even steam that if you wish. I wouldn't. I would just go ahead and dehydrate it if you're going to cook it. And raw or, oh my God, my tummy is so full right now. <laughs> it doesn't take much to fill up this girl. What was the other thing that I ate today? Yeah, the tomatoes and the cucumber uh, bites that I made. So look. This tastes just like a Trini pastel. You craving pastels, man? Mm. Oh, yeah. That is so good. Now, I prefer it dehydrated into a burger. And then you just make these open face pastel burgers. Mm hmm. You can do the buckwheat dough. I remember you put them on the stove one night, did I? I swear I just smelled mustard. The mind is powerful, right? So powerful. Mm. You guys, it has been an absolute pleasure to be with here with you here all day today. Mm-hmm. This pastel, this Bernsey burger pastel style. Enjoy. Let me know if you make it and hashtag the real juicy detox, hashtag Bernsey Burgers if you make this and let me know how it comes out. I'm going to later on form these all into patties and put them in the dehydrator, dehydrate them for five or six hours. They'll get brown on the top. Crazy. It'll turn brown like you cooked the meat and it will be nice and dry on the outside, a nice little crust on the outside, and soft and so good. When you bite into it, it's quite like biting into a juicy burger. It is so, so good. So good. Alana says, I'm going to get a burger out of the freezer for dinner later. LOL. Awesome. 
I love you, Burns. You're a trooper. I'm going to watch the replay. LOL. Love you all very much. Yes, watch the replay. Tonight's um, evening check-in is going to be watched. Watch any part of this replay that you would like. But I'm going to power down the technology. I'm going to spend some time with my amazing man. And uh, we'll see you guys here tomorrow. Who wants to come bouncing with Burns tomorrow? Yes. Come bounce with me. We have a great morning class that we do. I bounce for 15 to 30 minutes. And then I would wait before you drink that, babe. You're going to give yourself lots of gas. Yeah. Don't drink melon juice on top of veggies. That will that will give you indigestion for sure. I know. It's all good. It is all good. Look at this cute little one I made. A little, a little pasta shape. So, um... Come jump with me. Come bounce with me tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time if you feel so inclined, if you would like. And if not, I'll see you back here the next time. And remember, I love you. I love you guys so much. Mwah.